What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Kind of Funny Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the producer slash seducer, Nick Scarpino. Am I the only one that thought it was Timothee Chalamet? Yes. Why did I think that? I don't know. You're the, you're like the you're supposed to be one of the entertainment guys. No, that's got an action dude. on it. It's you understand when someone no, yeah, said Nick, funny. it's, it's that, pronounced it's, and spelled differently. That I glommed onto that. I was like, I got to be the guy that corrects it, everyone. Nick, in in, in the, like the the correct French, it's it is pronounced Timote. But mm -hmm. um, in some interview, he came out and he was like, "Yeah, just it's always been Timothy." Well, if he's mm -hmm. gonna do Timothy, then it just should be, should be Chalamet. <laughs> but you can't let mix yeah. and match. <laughs> yeah, that's great. see that's my great. problems. Do you see my confusion? Fucking hour. But I feel like it's been we've heard. I, if I know how to say the name, because I've heard it in interviews. Now, granted, it's because he used to make custom Xbox controllers. I forget if y'all saw. Oh this. yeah, y'all saw yeah, this yeah, big yeah. reveal that when he was a kid, he he did YouTube videos where he made custom Xbox 360 controllers. That's a big deal. That kid's cool. I'm old. It might have been Xbox One controllers. I'm not sure because he's very young. You know who else made custom Xbox controllers though? Who's that? Rahul Kohli, our guest. Trump. Oh, wow. So I don't know if that's indicative of someone's. <laughs> it's one of those things, Rahul, where it, as soon as you, as soon as they're choosing to make Xbox controllers instead of PlayStation controllers, they're on my bad yeah. side. Well, they go even guy. further. What, what, I, I didn't ever catch it. What did Donald Trump's Xbox controllers that he made that were custom look like, Rahul? Oh, they were orange. Oh, man. Not that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> were they various it. shades or was it just the one orange one orange. one orange yeah. one orange all the way you through the whole thing yeah to see it i want to get back to you rahul <laughs> we'll get back to you uh the other member of the podcast he's four of 30 under 30 aka the second best baby blues in san francisco aka the verified one at tim gettys let's him post i've done so many shows with nick and i i don't know why that like when he says things i just trust him and i feel like i've done enough shows to mm. know not to do that you like do until that. today i thought that it was timothy because of nick i've never heard anyone else say it except him but I just you've didn't. never heard timothy chalamet no but it's not I mean, a Marvel like, movie, so that makes sense. I understand. Not, yeah, exactly. Not yet. So I, I don't know. But I'm like looking at uh, a YouTube video that is uh, him pronouncing his name for almost two minutes. And I, I will say that he isn't committed that hard. When uh, he was on Graham Norton, and Graham Norton's like, how do you say it? And he's like, however you want. And it's like, well, no, you need to you need to stick the landing on that. Because I know I heard someone say Tim O'T. And I'm like, now we're just adding a whole other variation that I've never even heard of before. Tim, let me tell you something as a moron who has to say names all the time. Mm -hmm. I feel like if if people have mispronounced your name your entire life, and you're, you're Timothy Chalamet, yeah, not only now. a small person, literally, he's young, right? He's he's an up and comer. Very I feel like you get to the point where call him paper bag and he's gonna he's gonna respond because he's just like he's over it. Nobody wants to. I'm sure no when I fuck up somebody's name, they don't want to correct me. I want them to, they don't want to. It's been their whole life, you know what I mean? They don't got. They don't got. They don't want to. Why? They just want to go on with the interview. They don't care. Let's just get through this. Well, Let's talk about foot ten. You, you're oh, damn. That's tall. Yeah, he's small. Your name could be. Oh, come on. How? That's, that's tiny. <laughs> Your name could be whatever you want it to be. A boy. Five foot general... ten. I mean, I think I think Ben's already that height. You know, man's a giant. Know. Okay. A giant among men. Just hitting close to home here. Uh. Yeah, but if your name is if everyone just calls you one name, it doesn't matter what your name is. It just you become that name after a while, right? Yeah. Everyone just calls you Timothy. You're like, fuck it, I'm Timothy. That's the way it is. At, at what That's point? What I'm popular for. At what point do you think the like the E with the accent before the standard E? Did, well, do, do you think that was an accident? Do we think that he ever tried to maybe change that? Are both these supposed to have the accent? Because like it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense when I see accents over letters it's always like like a, a, a latin last name or something but like to see two vowels together the same vowel one of them has the accent that's just beyond crazy to me like i don't understand the logic behind it should be it. Calling Tim Tim e. i'm calling the only tim i know oh jesus god pick scarpino <laughs> from kind of funny hey tim how do you spell your name <laughs> this was this worth it was not this worth it it's not <laughs> worth it it really was. Oh. He's a Hispanic heartthrob, Texas treat, Latino heat, clicking heads and ripping them to shreds. The globe trotting, head shot, and nitro rifle from twitch.tv. Andy Cortez. Nick, you missed it last week. Greg said rooting tootin'. God dang it. He does he everything I want him to do when I'm not here. 
You That's missed okay. the one time. Joshy G writes into patreon.com slash kind of funny and says, is Andy scared of horror content or is Andy scared of Rahul? I saw him playing Resident Evil. Now, our guest here, of course, Weird. is Rahul Kohli. He needs no introduction. You know him from Midnight Mass. You know him from iZombie. You soon I know, know him from, from all those. of the House of Usher. You know him from Fortnite. Hello, Rahul. I, I saw Greg. on the internet your heartbreak mm. in real time. Mm -hmm. where Andy Cortez for about five years has said he loves you. He wants to support you, but your stuff is too scary. Then what did you see last night, Rahul? I think I'm being gaslit. I uh, saw a notification that Andy was going live on Twitch to play Resident Evil 2. Mm -hmm. Albeit the gamma turned up to 500%. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. still, I feel gaslit, to be honest. Um, Ignacio Rojas writes into patreon.com slash kind of funny and says, how's it going, kind of funny crew? And hello, Rahul. Great. How are you? I want to know what the people want to know. Why is Andy such a bad friend to Rahul by refusing to watch any of his shows? Clearly, Andy has no excuses. The people want to know. Wow. 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 Is that all you have to say for yourself, Andy? Oh, I thought you were asking Rahul the question. <laughs> yeah, I got confused. Who was the question for? Uh, Ignacio yeah. just has you. It started with a Rahul question, ends with an Andy It was, it was how am I? Podcast, guys. All I'm, right, keep going. I'm good. That was my bit of the question. Oh, okay. I'm, okay. I'm, okay. I'm okay. resting. And now it's over to Andy. Also, I got to shut the door. One second. I'm a bit it's weird. Yeah, it's, I don't know why people would call me out about that because I loved, I loved Midnight Mass. I was a huge fan of. What's the other one? What's the other one you like? What's the other one you like? What was the other one you liked? The what, what was the one? He, he uh, Rahul. He's a big fan of Midnight Mass and the other one. He can't come up with the name of it right now. Mm -hmm. Blythe Mansion. Blythe Mansion. That's the one. That's what it was. Yeah. Loved it. Loved both yeah. of those. Uh, I thought your characterization was great in them. In which one? Uh, what's up? In in which one? Well, both of them were just so strong you because you yeah, just, yeah, you were such a strong character, and the the writing and the the horror aspects. Albeit, yeah. you know, I'm kind of doing this the whole time, but. Still, just really gripping stuff. Um, did you like though, in you Bly Manor? Cool. In Bly Manor, did you like my Mexican accent? Was it authentic? Did I do? Did I stick the landing? Andy, the um, yeah, that's a trap. funny joke because <laughs> it's, it's funny you say that because I know that you were you didn't have a Mexican accent in in uh in. You're right. It was Colombian. So you, okay, you did watch it. That's cool. I did watch it. Yeah, a huge fan of all of it. So like, I don't know why people want to start this war between us because i've got nothing against you you know i love watching all your stuff um sheriff again. <laughs> you're the sheriff and guess what uh it's an empty town yeah and you're the are you reading the synopsis of jaws no 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 no, no. it's just summertime the yeah, you're. You, were, <laughs> you played July a sheriff. 4th. <laughs> you played a sheriff in in Midnight Mass, and you know at that one point you're wearing the you're wearing the Richard Nixon mask, right? And you're surfing and all that, that shit. That's, so, point okay. that's, that's point break. That's point break. Yeah. That's point break. Right yeah. There. yeah. Huh. <sighs> Man, well, well, I don't what, know what, if anyone saw my tweet, but I would be. It's it's to really put the pressure on Andy. I'd be willing to donate to a charity of his choice if he watched and reacted to hill house which i'm not even in yeah i'm just saying watch something terrifying <laughs> you weren't in that one really no. news i'm me. in the sequel or uh, whatever but not the first cool. one which is which is terrifying I, the I sequel isn't scary it, you know honestly Rahul, like i would have assumed you were in either one of them just because you disappear into the roles i don't mm -hmm. see rahul like that's when i'm watching these guys yeah, that's a good point well then kind of well, disappear into point. them um i, but I am for, known as uh, as the british asian Timothy yeah. Shalom with Shalomat. all the accents. <laughs> the problem mm -hmm. with it though is that um, when I do these charity drives, um, I, I I'll often see kind of the numbers dwindling. It's like, all right, mm -hmm. what can I do to really amp up the pressure? Mm -hmm. And I decide I'm going to do something that makes me really uncomfortable, and I'm going to play like a scary video game, and that always gets the everybody gets all horny for that shit, right? All these little freaks out there. Mm -hmm. Um, but when it comes to you, Rahul, like I would hate to, I would hate for that money to go to people that need it. And it said, like, I can give you my Venmo if we really want to, like, talk. Yeah. F you know, numbers and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Forget the Tim charity. is my finance guy. So you just talk Patreon, to him if you just want. Just go to Patreon and talk to me. Patreon.com slash kind of funny. Yeah. Oh, you know. oh yeah. Patreon. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Because, yeah. I mean, we're kind of a charity, right? Like, we're I helping guess each so. other. Yeah. You know? 
We could use the money. Yeah, we could use the money. Yeah. Uh, but for everybody saying that, like, I'm too scared to watch them, um, they're, absol- they're absolutely right. Um, and there is really no amount of money that'll make me do it. And I don't know why last night I said that I would accept charity money. You did, yeah. On behalf of the charity. <laughs> and I immediately walked it back, like, seconds later. I was like, why am I saying this? That's just going to make you donate yeah, money. Yeah. But to be fair, oh, like, you said, hey, I'll, Andy, I'll, I'll give you 150 bucks to your favorite charity. Ray and Tina are throwing out $1,000 for me to play this fucking game. So, like, you got to step it Oof. up, Netflix, man. You got to step it up, Netflix, man. You want, you want 1000 to watch Hill House? The Make show I'm not in. <laughs> three. That's the best part of it. <laughs> it like, doesn't even solve the crux of the problem. <laughs> yeah. I'm still not going to end up watching anything that he's in. What's the next thing you're in, Rahul? What's that next short you're in? Or not the short, but the, another indie. <laughs> Why are you doing this in the most backhanded way possible? What's that next uh, little, uh, what's that next student film you're in? Like, what's what's going on? Is. What are you going to back to your real job? Uh, let's have, have you bullshit, hit rock bottom? You know? Did you start a YouTube channel yet? Ghostbusters <laughs> is the next project with my co-star greg uh, miller how you doing because which is probably too scary ghost. for you andy again uh, the fucking scary stuff why it's not gonna be like, scary andy. you scary. can be the ghost you can scare us andy that's what ghostbusters spirits unleashed is all about available this year wow speaking of speaking of some charity stuff Ro, i have a question for you about the star wars charity things that you've done with mm. bruce green and them Mm-hmm. Where for people that don't know, Roll's done this awesome stuff a couple times now. I think you've done all the prequels, right? Yeah, Jacob, uh, Jacob Fulton and I recited the Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, and Revenge of the Sith drunk as best I we could. That. And I love that. If we if we needed to like if we flubbed a line or we needed to call for a line, Bruce was reading stage direction. Um, we would have to do, buy it with a shot. So we just got, prog- especially when in Phantom Menace, when we hit the trade negotiations in the Senate, oh, yeah, uh, tough time. voting on Chancellor Valorum's vote of no confidence, that's where things got <laughs> dicey. Yeah. Most of Attack of the Clones was a mess. Um, and then we, we wrestled it back for revenge. But so like, th- what blows my mind about this is you didn't have the scripts in front of you. No. You, you were off your memory doing yeah. every line. Oh, and if you got a line wrong, then you did shots. <laughs> Right. So yeah, so on the Zoom the the feed was hosted by Bruce, so the script was available for the audience to see um on his screen share. Um but we could only see each other. We couldn't see that. So like I know you're you're a big fancy actor guy and it's part of your your whole mm. deal to like memorize lines and He does a lot of independent all, all shorts of as Andy would say. A lot <laughs> of independent shorts. I do a lot of shorts, I, yeah. I am just baffled, no matter how big a Star Wars fan you are, that you're able to just remember every line of the entire movie. Like, I've seen some of those movies a bazillion times, and I don't, I might be able to get, like, one line. Like, may the force be with you every once in a while I get right. But, like, sure. I, I just, did you practice for it, or is this just in there? No, it was, we didn't, we didn't want to practice. We did Revenge of the Sith, um... For some reason, I can't remember why. I think Jacob and I just wanted to hang out. We were like, "Screw it, let's watch it and 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 recite." You know, jog our memories. But we already knew the Phantom Menace, so it came from we would go out drinking, and it would inevitably spill into Jacob and I doing, you know, Sebulba and or Boss Nass. And um, at some point, we were like, <laughs> "I bet we could do the whole movie." So it was just it was just through repetition, really. It's funny though because this. The, the the key to it with Star Wars is it's there's so much um it's 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 so heavily underscored uh that it's almost like reciting a song when I'm hearing I can hear the music and the beats are kind of merged into one. It's almost like lyrics. That's how it felt. You know that Andy it's, does a really good Anakin, young Anakin, in case you ever need to do it again. Is, is that gonna cost a slimo? Oh wow! Yeah. I was going to say I'd have given you a thousand dollars right now to Thank do you. it if that's the going rate to get <laughs> Andy to do something. Ah shit! <laughs> Here goes <Damn>. the money. <laughs> it used oh, to be about the the Basa. I do a pretty decent Sybil boss. Oh, also, Raul, mm. really mm. good. If you ever do episode one again, mm. call me in just for the Sybilba's. <gasps> that's Sybilba's engines. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, good. yeah, yeah. That's fantastic. That was actually crazy because there's different engines and Andy does all of them differently. And yeah. give me Anakin's engines. <laughs> Uh, it's just like a kind of like a whistling sort of 
You do Ben like Quadraneros. A, I was about to say, give me Ben Quadrafuckaneros. <laughs> <laughs> like some shit like that. I love that you beat me to the exact name, too. Because <laughs> that's the only one you know. It's iconic. Who, who posted that question on Twitter? Uh, or somebody posed a question on Twitter to the internet. I think it was like somebody in our kind of friend group that was like, did Ben Quadranero, like, is that is that a nickname because the dude had four engines? Mm. Or did he <laughs> decide to have four engines because of his last name? <laughs> so do you, think his, do you think his last name was Gennaro? And they call him Quad Gennaro? Oh, like, okay. But we're, we're also assuming Lord. he speaks English because Quad might mean something in his own native. That's fair. Oh, wow. It's very fair. Look at this. We're making a fucking Star Wars prequel right now. Give us how many millions of dollars, Disney Plus? Let's do it. I mean, because, yeah, it's like, you know, my last name is Miller, and that's probably because at some point somebody who had it was a Miller, right? Like, mm -hmm. they milled stuff. So maybe this is something that the Quadraneros have had four for, of whatever they have forever. They, you know, they had four. Reproductive organs. Do backs. What, yeah, reproductive <laughs> organs, whatever, that were pulling their sleds. You know what I mean? That could easily be it. Nick, just wear a little cowboy hat and you'll be Dave Filoni. Look at that. Just wear a little cowboy oh, hat. Dude, it's, it's How so easy. Does the hat dude. I write this stuff with my hands behind my back. This motherfucker is just dude, making easy. bank off the dumbest shit of all time, right? Am I right? It's like, well, <laughs> me or Dave Filoni? <laughs> I'm, I'm confused you were insulting as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I take no offense either way. Oh, great. Okay, cool, cool, cool. What are we talking about, y'all? This is the kind of funny podcast each and every week. Four, sometimes five best friends gather on this table. Each coming to BS with each other about whatever they want to BS about. If you want to BS with us, go to patreon.com slash kind of funny. Over on patreon.com slash kind of funny. You can write it with your own questions. You can get the show ad free. You can get the show with the exclusive post show we do each and every week. And of course, you could be watching live just like Joe Mertens is, Madeline Stanley are, and Lexi GR. If you're watching live, chat it up. I'll look over there. And you trogs can be part of the show as well. Who cares? Of course, over on Patreon dot com slash kind of funny you can also get exclusive stuff like the next gen podcast like the q a show barrett and i just did a whole bunch of fun stuff is waiting for you on patreon.com slash kind of funny however if you have no bucks tossed our way it's no big deal if you're buying video games on that epic game store use the creator code kind of funny if you're playing Fortnite and just buying v bucks on the switch or wherever use that epic code kind of funny of course you can get the kind of funny podcast for free on youtube.com slash kind of funny roosterteeth.com and podcast services around the globe each and every week uh, of course you have to listen to the ads you don't get the post show and you'll never really know who killed jr housekeeping right now on youtube.com slash kind of funny and screencasts around the globe you can get our clerks three frame by frame reaction to the trailer mm -hmm. that's right rahul the best trilogy better than lord of the rings is back clerks oh. is here to save us all go find that out and if you don't watch that you can watch miss marvel we have that I, I will say i was utterly impressed with kevin and greg's ability to do a frame by frame breakdown of the clerks 3 trailer like i thought we, that we weren't actually going to do that we do that for marvel movies we do it for star wars all that stuff it makes sense for clerks i was like we'll fucking see it's it loads up every single frame both of them are pointing out like 15 different things in in every single shot i was like damn so go check that out. It's very that's impressive. Build, that's how you build the world. When we, we went and watched that new Amazon Prime Lord of the Rings show, Andy had nothing to say. He was like, yeah. I guess well, this, is guy, this guy's oh, got like elf, elf ears. Must be an elf. Yeah. Maybe he's a friend of Legolas. Is, is he, is he old or is he Legolas. young? You don't know because the elves, they live a long time, you right? Know they can run on Cracks snow. another beer. Andy falls out of his chair. <laughs> An embarrassment to the Lord of the Rings fandom. <laughs> you know what I mean? The worst. <laughs> None of that is true. <laughs> well, you know, go check it out. I also was given this little factoid. Did you know that we did in review for the Kevin Smith View Askew Universe that it's our least successful in review of all time? Oh, We're great. not stopping it, ladies and gentlemen. We're doing Clerks 3. So go back and do your goddamn homework and watch those, all right? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Christ. <laughs> I wanted to call uh, out that, for you. What? I just wanted to call out that uh look okay, finish your thing. I got some more beef to settle with Rohan. Oh my oh, god. Shit. Merch of the month is happening right now. Of course, we're this year we're trying to put up new merch every month on kindofunny.com slash store. Right now it's the tropical collection. It is made by the one and only Nick at Campfire Design Studio. So go check out the new beach towels, the new shirts, and the cool sunglasses over on kindoffunny.com slash store. Thank you to our Patreon producers, Nathan Lamoff, uh, David Huzenga, Dale Delaney Twinning, Gordon McGuire, Fargo Brady, Huba Stanky. That's a great Ooh, fucking name right there. Huba great. Stanky. Real right? good. Gordon McGuire, Hargot Singh, and Al Tribesman. Nick? Today oh, we're brought back? to you by Chime and Spot Shopify. Oh, uh, back. But we'll tell you about that a little bit later. Andy, you have more beef. No, I just wanted to throw something else down for Rahul because, again, I'm, I'm criticized about never wanting to support my friend. And it's something that I often bring up with him. Stop being in scary stuff. Rahul, lest you forget, 
lest you forget. Mm-hmm. Lest, you lest you, you forget that I played, least... I played Rage Two. And I was in that. You're right. Rage was and great. that was fun. I heard Tim talk about Gears uh, Five. It was great. Tim liked great. Gears Five. Yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, I mean that's voice work. Hmm. It's not, not real you, acting. Okay. Do not watch the face you do like its thing. A lot to there. I mean, I I just had a photo of you on my phone, kind of while I was playing the game, and just kind of. I yeah. gotcha. That's him. That's yeah. Him, do, you, do you ever do you still do the thing where you where you print Ruffles' uh, face out and then just cut out the eyeballs and the mouth and then you talk into the mirror like you're him? Do you still do that? I do it on stream every once in a while. Andy, that's what I do every once in a while. Oh, that's really it's good. pretty good, actually. That's pretty good. Bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. you. Better watch out, man. He might take Thanks, your life. Yeah. He Bro, might Rahul, take my give, me, give me your favorite line from Phantom Menace. Not with a just as you talking it out, and then Andy, I want you to repeat the same line in your Rahul impression. If okay. they find us, they will crush us, grind us into tiny pieces, and blast us into oblivion. If they find us, they will. Cr- Hold on, <clears throat> Jason Statham. Yeah. <laughs> If they, find us, if they find us, if they find us, they will crush, uh, crush us into oblivion. I'm Dominic Toretto. So, right? I, Irishman? I'm Dominic Toretto. You don't know me, but you're about to. There it is. There it is. <laughs> Not what I did at all. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> it's actually a third of what you did. Really my on. name is, my name, if they find us, they will grind us into oblivion. Michael Caine. Michael Caine. There it is. Yeah, there it is, Greg. Really Did that. Good. Real proud of you. I'm Andy's pretty good got at that one, though, Raul. You can give me that. I'm pretty good at Michael Caine. No, that was good. Thank you. That was really good. Rahul, Andy's got a real problem showing and receiving love. All right? Right. Because he can't watch your content. He can't, he can't do it unless you throw $1,000 at him. And then I'll have you know, today on the streets of San Francisco, he called me a fucking psycho. I want you to know that's what he called me today. In the yeah, streets. Well, in public. What can, did you stop, do? can we stop right there? We don't need to ask what he did. <laughs> we're all fucking now. We can we, put we, it together. We, whatever we come up with is going to be better than whatever's going to be yeah, more sane than what happened. I am for, I'm just going to say, without hearing the story, Andy, I'm firmly on your side on this one. 100% Thank you, on Nick. Your side. I'm Thank sitting you. here in my room. I hear a knock on my door. And Barrett goes, I think you just got a ticket on your car. I think you got a parking ticket or something. I'm like, weird. Okay. I walk out. And I see this. <laughs> I already hate it. I see this thing underneath my my windshield wiper, and I open it up, and it's a Jurassic World poster that says, "Worldies don't forgive or forget. Justice for Fallen Kingdom." Yeah. With a picture of a, a drawing of a dinosaur that says, "He hates you," and I hear laughing across the street. <laughs> <laughs> and I turn around and I just see a camera phone going, <laughs> and, I, and I'm just like, you're a fucking psycho. You're a psycho. And there's people walking by. Good a sec. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> you're a psycho. <laughs> I, that's a lot of people would pay good money to have Greg Miller come. I'm on Greg's house. side. I'm on Greg's side. <laughs> Thank you, Rahul. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now, does, it, does it does it matter that Neri? What two weeks ago? About two weeks ago, when we saw Jurassic Park, uh, it was longer like, than two weeks ago. Three weeks. Yeah, it's all been a blur. When we saw it, Greg and I quote said, "This movie's horrible. I'm I'm renouncing my membership to the the worldies or whatever they call it. We're done." And now he's just back on that train. That's not what I said. I said that was a, a bad, bad movie, and we all know that. I thought you were actually one of the people who walked out with me. Because if you remember what happens is I walked out with that poster, and somebody said, what are you going to do with your poster? And I said, I'm going to keep it and eventually put it on Andy's car. Oh, okay. <laughs> but you walk- today I lived the dream, Rahul. Today I lived the dream. Wait, you, you, you walked out of it? No, no, I mean, at the end of it, you know, the, oh, you know, oh, the, the oh, screener oh, was done. You know what I mean? Oh, I, I, if we're in bad. review, I have to stay through it. You know, and I have to do it. Ah, it was an entertaining movie enough. You don't have to leave it, but. Have you uh, ever walked out of a movie? I've walked out of a couple movies. Which one? Which ones? Two movies that come to mind. Uh, not in recent years, but uh, one was The Tailor of Panama. Have you ever seen that movie with, with, uh, with uh, not Bronson Pinchot? Who's the guy that played 007 Goldeneye? 
Pierce, Pierce Brosnan. Brosnan. Yeah, Brosnan. I wish it was Bronson Pinchot right now. I'll tell you right <laughs> yes. now. It's, I had Brosnan. Alki was James Bond. That's a motion picture. And then there was another movie called The Avengers, not Marvel's The Avengers. There was oh, the original the show, based yeah. on the – yeah, 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 yeah. With yeah. Ray Fiennes and Uma Thurman. And it was like so deplorably boring and bad that I literally um, was like, I, I'm just going to go sneak into a different movie. I think I went and saw something else. Did you know because of that show and movie, Nick, in Europe – Avengers one is called Avengers Assemble. That's true. That makes sense. Does it still have Sean Connery and Uma Thurman in it? You can vouch for this, Rahul. Well, no, he's I, right. I, I, he's right. Also, X Black X2, Widow and Iron Man. I don't know. X two in the UK. X Men United. X Men United. We have that too. That oh us, wait, yeah. is that you got them? There's a reverse. I can't remember. There's something different in one of the titles. X Men X three is X Men United. Um, no, yeah. no, it's wait. the last stand. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, lost. Yeah, yeah. X2 oh, is X Men United. <laughs> we yeah. uh, uh, Encino Man. Leather Party. Yeah. No. Nope. What? California Man. Because uh, they don't know what Encino sense. is. That makes sense. Because mm-hmm. even people, man. even at that time, people in California were like, where's Encino? <laughs> weird place. Oh my God. California Encino man is the. Is a terrible name. <laughs> <That's horrible. laughs> California Man's a great name. How dare Not you. for that movie. Man. Encino. But we don't know what Encino is. Andy did not know that Encino well, neither did was I. California. Encino. <laughs> I didn't, mean, I didn't like, either. I, just I know. In, like... Yeah. Oh, my God. I just had my fucking mind blown right now. It's like the when I learned that Mamma Mia wasn't a store, a movie about a family pizza joint. Like, I feel like you're still holding on to that one, though. I feel like you I, still don't believe it. I, I'm still yeah, I'm still kind of in doubt on the Mamma Mia one. I still think that that might still be a little family piece of joy. And maybe it's John Favreau running around. He's got his family. They're baking pizzas all over the place. But fuck oh. it. Oh, Tim's glitching again. Tim's yeah, looking crazy bad. on the Discord. But Encino myself. Man, obviously I know Encino is a place in California, but I never put it together that mm. that was, oh my That's God. That's where they found Brendan Fraser. They thought him out mm. of a ball of ice in it took an, California. Fuck. It took an Englishman to break that to you. Mm. I was it gonna did. say Rahul was was Polly Shore a, a big deal? Was he did he take the UK by storm as well? But I feel like he did. Okay. Did he take the you US away from, from, Oh, yeah, oh Polly Shore. Yeah. Biodome and Cino Man. Yeah. MTV like son in law. Yeah. Really stronghold. He was yeah. the poster boy for no. MTV for MTV a long Spring time. Break. Yeah. Polly Shore yeah. was everywhere, man. I don't, yeah, I don't oh feel like God. they did. I was surprised. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised you even knew what Encino Man was. You know what I mean? Like I didn't think that would go over there. I wanted to. I wanted to. I, we were big in the VHS renting, you know, blockbuster video mm. stuff, and, and we were. I've heard a, kid a lot and, about the Coley's. Yeah. Oh yeah, big, big, big <laughs> renters. Um, but and I just remember California Man really wanting to see it, and <laughs> my parents so were like, "No." I don't know why they put their foot down on that one. So I still <laughs> haven't good. seen it. Oh, it's you good. It's really Encino good. Man. You should check it yeah. out. It's a, legit, it's a legit good movie. It's not, it's, Polly Shore is the secondary character in that. Sean Astin's mm-hmm. the lead in that. Mm. Um, and Brendan, well, Fraser, Brendan Fraser is the lead for the most part. But Polly Shore is kind of like comic relief. That was this, that was like the movie that broke him out before I think he got super huge, like Son of Law and the other ones. Yeah. And I'm prepared to, I'm prepared to continue this trend of making this like one of the worst podcasts of just, I'm just like asking Rahul, like, have you watched this? Like for the rest of the show, because immediately when you said that your parents put your foot down on Encino Man or Mm. California Man, Mm. I for some reason I just in my mind I was like my parents did that with like Beavis and Butthead do America. Oh Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, do you know there's a Beavis and Butthead movie on Paramount Plus Mm -hmm. called Do the Universe? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. (laughs) I watched it last night. How was it? Every bit as good as Beavis and Butthead do America. Take that, that for whatever. Weird. Take that for whatever. It oh, I'm is. down. That's awesome. <laughs> that I grew up with is, Beavis and Butthead. Well, it is like, it is like Mike Judge was just like, I'm not even gonna try to make these characters like, like I'm not gonna bring them into the. There's a couple jokes that I think are kind of pretty clever about them like coming into uh, uh, 2022, mm. but for the most part, it is the exact same level of humor that you got in 1998. Exact same. And if it's you thought perfect. it was funny back then, just don't watch it with anyone around. Because I gave oh, it the lo- entire time. It was oh, so, oh my God. Okay. so stupid. It's so I mean, that's kind of refreshing. I, in the original one, I still think of the, uh, them in Vegas and them being at the Hoover Dam and being like, is this like a goddamn? <laughs> like, for some reason that, that joke just stuck with me out of, like a goddamn, you know? There's I, like, that joke just stuck with me my whole life. But I've just now I'm just interested in kind of what things Rahul grew up with because I would have never expected you to have grown up on Beavis and Butthead. That seems like 
such an insular American yeah. Americana cultural thing. You know, the so other, were, the they were, they rented a lot of VHSs, don't forget. We did. We yes. rented a lot of VHSs. Well, one that I, I got my dad to buy, and I was, I believe I was about 10, uh, was the Street Fighter 2 animated movie with Brian Cranston as Fei Long, right? And I was a big Street Fighter fan. And even though it had a 15 certificate, and my dad was pretty strict about, like, no, it's not appropriate, da, da, da. I managed to convince him, I was like, it's a cartoon. It's about Street Fighter. How, it's a how cartoon, it right? So a we bought scene. it. <laughs> You're right. So we, we bought it, and then I remember before we went home, we stopped off at my grand's, and I couldn't wait. So I put the VHS in, oh, and cool. then my dad heard DJ say motherfucker from the other room, and all hell broke loose, and that VHS was gone from, <laughs> no! from my clutches oh. for at least a year or two. You flew too close to the sun on that one. I That's did, I did. Man. You know what I mean? I did. That well, little did I know, there would have been, if he had just, if DJ had a shut his mouth, I could have got some titties. <laughs> yeah, so was exactly. there full nudity? Because I don't remember that. I, uh, oh, yeah. I think, I think she fights. Isn't there like a nude fight scene for us? No, no, no. She, she's in like, um, her, like, a, What's this a, movie a called? Baggy shirt. Street, Street Fighter. Fighter. Oh, okay. <laughs> the animated Street movie. Fighter. The animated, Street the Fighter animated 2, the animated movie. movie. So it was, I remember this movie very vividly. It's fantastic. Street Fighter 2, the animated movie. Yes. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, because the, the, you're, don't be, don't get it confused with the, the movie starring Val Jean-Claude, Kill, Van uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme and Kylie right. Minogue. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, which was an interesting movie, we'll just say, an unfortunate uh, Oh my gosh. That Raul Julia made, but. I remember watching that being like, wow, they're, they're never going to make another Street Fighter thing again. And this was back when I was getting into like Japanese animation. Mm. And I remember Street Fighter 2, the anime movie came out. And it just the fight <laughs> scenes alone, how they were animated, are so dope in that movie. Oh, yeah. You remember the opening so with, with Sagat and the grass and the lightning? The grass and the lightning. Oh, and it's real. And he's like charging his, yeah. It's, it's Balrog's cross movie. eyes make me laugh every <laughs> single time he's on. Greg Miller from Kind of Funny. Sorry, right, I'm doing some Google image searching what's here. Up, so I just need to make sure what's real and what's fake. Like, you try, you try yeah, to figure glasses. out what the sports score was. To the I sports. need to figure out what's real and what's fake. So Chung Lee in the shower, that's real. That's Correct. Right. Mm-hmm. Correct. But this thing of uh, Cammy? Uh, Cammy completely nude fighting people, not real. Not real. No. no not, not Those don't look real. Because there's, uh, Greg, are you, you looking at the nude photo? filter? Are you looking at the pic where like uh, that other lady's about to punch her in the chooch? Are you seeing right that in the photo? vagina? Yeah, yeah the, What's, I forget <laughs> who's the one who's, who wears who looks like she's an elite beat. C Viper, I think. C Viper, Crimson yeah. Viper. Yeah, she's definitely oh, yeah, got she's Cammy's not leg, and she's like, it looks like never gonna birth a child again. Take this in the fucking cooter. Tim, you want me to link you to this? Damn. <laughs> Damn. I, no, DJ Kendall. I'm holding it back, Kevin. There's an animated Street Fighter movie, Jen, and there's nudity in it. But when you Google it, there's a bunch of people who have, I don't, perverts, if you ask me, who have gone through and made, they've drawn some very, very good things. I don't you remember know? it being like explicit nudity. I remember it was, she was like a, it was like a, supposed to be like a tasteful shower oh, it's, sequence. It no. was, it was a little no, boot no, no. jiggle, one shot. I it's remember it. enough that they had to make different versions of it. Oh, okay. And re-release it. So, yeah. yeah it, well, was, it was just the boobs. It was the thing. The boobs was the only thing cut out. Because that was the only nudity. Yeah. I'm seeing full boob. You see yeah, the boob? I mean, you get nipped. Like it's like yeah. it's it's okay. a lot more than I expected. I, 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 I stand corrected. I stand corrected. You're gonna full boob and full full nip. Um, Googling this photo here on the, no, on, no know, on the podcast, much, right? and Greg kind of having the same reaction that I did. It just reminded me of the one time on the kind of funny podcast that, like, uh, for some reason we Kevin <laughs> Googled. Kevin brought up porn <laughs> on some link, and we all like oh. looked at the confidence monitor, and Nick goes, "That's a big one." <laughs> <laughs> it was that one. It wasn't. It wasn't. Oh. I just randomly brought up porn. No, no, Nick no, no, was yeah. talking about the drummer who had a big dick, and we looked it up. Tommy oh, Lee Jones. <laughs> Travis Barker. No, Travis Barker. <laughs> Tommy Lee God. had it. I said Tommy Lee Jones. Travis Parker also Tommy had a hell of a hog. Tom, the famous drummer and actor, Tommy Lee Jones. Tommy Lee Jones. Lee Jones. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought he said Tommy face. Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we at? Uh, real, real quick, DJ Kento blew my mind. Nick, uh, did you know that you and I did a full-on watch-along to Street Fighter II, the animated movie, on Kind of Funny? No. <laughs> that sounds really familiar. We did we fucking really? did it. It's live right now. <laughs> what? So, hey, oh, a we did a watch-along. That's right. When those that when we were doing the, the watch-alongs with it. Yeah. That's right. So, anyway, studio. That's, wow. Wait, that's you're talking insane. about the Jean-Claude one? No, the no. animated one. The oh, one you watched the animated one? Yeah. 
That's wild. It's a great how, movie. How big was Jean Claude Van Damme for you growing up? For me personally, not. I I didn't I didn't fuck with you him. didn't fuck he, with him. Okay. No no no. I was a big Stallone kid. Yeah yeah. And I had and Stallone, Dolph Lundgren, and Schwarzenegger, and I was good. Okay. Yeah. A lot of yeah. a lot of meat in one. You know you don't need a lot of more. Rice. Too much yeah. my body oil. Mm-hmm. J- JCVDs is fucking the splits were just like the coolest thing of all time. The, the splits like, weren't cool for me. <sighs> what? This guy's so flexible. Well, but, they, but how are they not cool? Like how? Like that seems like, like a very like, cool thing. Schwarzenegger's old in a log in Commando. Mm-hmm. Fucking tree. A tree. Stallone. Let's call it what it is? It's a full-on tree that he probably. It's a out tree. Of yeah. And Stallone. What have we got from Stallone? I mean, cliffhanger. Everything. And he's judged everything Rambo. he's done. Rambo, Rocky, Rocky like his, his back. Um, he was a goalkeeper in a Pele movie. Okay. Escape to victory with Michael Caine and Pele. Interesting. Can't help you on that one. Anyway. Okay. Escape to victory. And then Dolph Lundgren was Ivan Drago and He Man. Oh, and he man, like he, he 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 yeah like he what does he do in Rocky Four like. I don't know. Knocks out. He killed Apollo with a punch, and but Jean Claude Van Damme can do the splits. No, but the thing thing my sister could do the splits. Jean Claude mm-hmm. Van Damme mm-hmm. took down a human ogre that. in that fucking <laughs> blood sport movie with the sand, like yeah. the the pocket sand moment. Oh, yeah. yeah, like that was such an iconic scene for me growing up. It was that. Oh, uh, but I always forget. Is that blood sport or is that? Blood sport. Yeah, uh, is blood sport okay. He gets Jean the in his fine. eyes. Yeah. He's always, he's fine. He's whatever. I agree yeah. with, we're going to go Schwarzenegger. We're going to go uh, uh, Stallone over him. However, Time Cop, what a fantastic film. Oh, Time Cop, great film. Oh, right. I've seen a lot of people Cop. sleep on that. Yeah. What was, the call, think, what was Time Cop called in, uh, in Mary Old England? Uh, it Clock was, <laughs> yeah, Clock <laughs> Police. Clock <laughs> Police. <laughs> 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 I like we've got a lot done here so we our official list of of incredible action heroes goes it goes uh i think stallone i gotta go stallone yeah. jcvd and then paulie shore those are Ooh. the four Pauly shore. that were <laughs> we've got so far yeah. i did have questions about paulie shore and i remember living through the paulie shore era right and so 1992 and St- encino man comes out rocks he, he's rocketed to fame but then it was like Obviously, I think of a biodome. I think of a son-in-law, right? And I don't remember those ever being good or being that endearing. And it actually goes, yeah, Encino Man, then son-in-law in 93, then in the Army now in 94, then jury duty 95, then bio, uh, biodome in 96. At which point I have to ask, why did he keep getting movies? Because I, like I'm saying, I've seen all these movies. I remember being part of I, I'm – Right in that prime age bracket that should be loving him, and I was not. Greg, I'm gonna, Greg yeah. that army one. Does does Paulie Shaw have to get his head shaved? And he's like, oh, yes. just not. The- yeah, so good. Why Andy Dixon in it that? too? Andy Dixon in it. And uh, oh. David Allen Greer was in it, and Laurie Petey. Um, yeah, Laurie Petey. Laurie Petey. First off, I, I will not stand for the hate of in the army now. Quality good film. Movie. Good movie. Quality film. Uh, Maybe Sun-Lock, I mean quality it, film. I, I, what I remember right now about it, closing my eyes, is Andy Dick. Mm-hmm. I remember when there's a scorpion on one of their backs, and he knocks mm-hmm. off the scorpion. Mm-hmm. And I remember Lori Petty, but I don't remember her doing anything or saying anything. She was tough. She I got a tough. funny Andy Dick story. Finally. Mm. First time in America, I just did the iZombie pilot in Canada, and then the show got picked up, and I arrived at the Roosevelt Ho- Hotel in Los Angeles. And... Mm-hmm. I still had my bags, so I hadn't even checked in yet. And I was like, I'm like in LA. Literally fresh off the bus. Yeah. I'm, I'm here living I am, my dream. This is Los Angeles. And I'm standing, and I went to the smoking area, just had my suitcases with me. And I sat down, and Andy Dick sat down next to me. Nice. And then he put his hand <laughs> on the happen. inside of my thigh. Yeah, that sounds right for Andy Dick. And was, and was just chatting to me about life. But and I was not, like, well, not at all mentioning the hand on your thigh. Nope, just inside okay. casually, and I was like, I- "I'm here. This is this is. I guess I'm getting the full Hollywood experience." Wow. wow. Yeah. If you if, down. if we would have known that at so that how long moment, did you date Andy Dick? <laughs> <laughs> if we would have known that at that moment, Andy Dick like was never seen from again, I would have just assumed that he just went off and just kind of went to an island somewhere. Like that was his last conversation with a human. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to end it here. Why not? Let me just leave civilization. It doesn't That's, get better than this. It's shocking this, as hell. This trips me out because I'm pretty sure Biodome came out before jury duty. So they must've held that movie. 
Because I remember Greg, Jury Duty being the last one that I was like, wow, that he's he's fallen for. According to IMDb, they flipped him, yeah. Yeah, Greg, you're asking, like, how did he keep getting these movies? To me, it's like Jury Duty was one for him. The other one's for the fans. Jury Duty's for me. Jury I get to make that one on my own. What a terrible movie that was. That was that? See, bad. I haven't seen any of these movies, like, whether you're talking about the Polish ones or all of the... the, oh, the Tia Carrera was in Jury the, Duty. Yeah. What is the best... Stanley uh, Tucci. Brian Doyle Murray. See, you read the cast here. The Tucci? For, what for is, Jury Duty, and you're like, holy shit, wait a second, we got a picture. Abe Vigoda? Come on. What's the best courtroom film, and why is it My Cousin Vinny? Oh, that's oh, the best. That's a great one. That's a great one. Two words. Or Ghostbusters 2. No, no, come on now. We, Tim's never seen My Cousin Vinny. Oh. <laughs> Trial for murder! Give him the I, chair! Oh, <laughs> All right. I I see Ivan Reitman's behind the camera. He's like, you know what? Just let him go. Just let him scream way more. <laughs> that's and you don't want May, us right? exposing yeah, my- ourselves. My cousin Vinny is great for Kitten, two words. What I'm two trying reasons. to say One is <laughs> Marissa Tomei. She's phenomenal in that movie, and she's not. Is she kid. Oscar winning? Is yeah. it Oscar worthy? Uh, I would give it to her. Why not? It was weird. Oh, I'd give it to her. Why not? Why not? <laughs> I just remember it was like that was the first time I ever saw like someone win for a role like that, where because it's yeah, largely yeah. a comedy. I was like, oh man, but they like everyone liked Marissa Tomei so much in that role. They're like, give it to her. Fuck it. Why we not? only watched it because it had Ralph Macchio in it, and my sister was such a big Daniel LaRusso stan, yeah. and it was like, I need to see more Karate Kid, and then we ended up watching My Cousin Vinny. It's um, a good movie. It's a it's great a really movie. movie. Yeah, Joe, Joe Pesci's, Pesci's fantastic. Finest. It's you definitely one of the ones here. that you always kind of stop on. Right? And I always just think of a 1969 Buick Skylark. Like, yeah, I just yeah. always hear Marissa Tomei doing her thing, and it's like, God, are I you have such a crush line line is, Are you sure? I'm positive. Oh, I love so that. good, dude. <laughs> So good, with a little gray, like the gray streak in her hair. So awesome. I mean, I was yeah. just looking up what year the Buick Skylark was, and then, bam, Chun-Li's boot, positive. <laughs> <laughs> little cool. up on my browser. <laughs> yeah, That's similar. That's how it works there. Don't worry Let about me it. exit that real quick. My bad. Let me you do that. You. And while you do that, I'll remind everybody they can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny to write in to be part of the show, to get the show with the post show, to be in the chat like Mike L is right now, saying 12 Angry Men is so damn good. Well, the one with Fonda. So he's saying for his courtroom drama pick, but that doesn't oh. matter for right now. Instead, what I'm telling you, of course, you can be on patreon.com slash kind of funny and you can get the show ad free. But guess what, Jack? You're not there. So here's a word from our sponsor. I love that sound. It's the sound of another sale on Shopify, the all-in-one commerce platform to start, run, and grow your business. Shopify gives entrepreneurs the resources once reserved for big business. So upstarts, startups, and established businesses alike can sell everywhere, synchronize online and in-person sales, and effortlessly stay informed. Scaling your business is a journey of endless possibility, and I know the Kind of Funny store at kindoffunny.com slash store uses Shopify to sell all our merch, including all those cool Portillo shirts you guys have been so great about supporting with. I love how Shopify has the tools and resources that make it easy for any business to succeed from down the street to around the globe. Reach customers online and across social networks with an ever-growing suite of channel integrations and apps. Go to shopify.com slash kfgames, all lowercase, for a free 14-day trial and get full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. Grow your business with Shopify today. Go to shopify.com slash kfgames right now. Shopify.com slash kf games no one likes waiting on a paycheck especially when you've got bills due good thing there's chime now you can get your paycheck up to two days early with direct deposit that's up to two more days to save pay bills and generally just feel good about your money situation but chime is more than just about getting paid early it's also an award-winning mobile app checking account debit card and optional savings account so what are you waiting for Hopefully not your paycheck. Get started with Chime today. Applying for a free account takes less than two minutes. Get started at chime.com slash KF Games. That's chime.com slash KF Games. Banking services and debit card provided by the Bancor Bank or Stride Bank NA members FDIC. Early access to direct deposit funds depends on your payer. We're back. What do you got? I got a question for Raul again. Mm. Because we're talking about the the American stuff that, that you did or did not see. Mm. Last night, uh, Gia and I indulged a little bit on, on a fine London export, Spice World. Oh, yeah. We watched the Spice Girls movie, Spice mm-hmm. World. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to go around the table here and ask everybody, like, was Spice Girls like the most important thing in the world to you at a moment? Or, or was that just yeah. me? <laughs> no, I'm with you. It, it, it really was infectious. I guess, I don't know what it was like in America, but they ruled the UK. They ruled here. Like they, there was those, and, those lollipops. And I just, 
just yep. started getting horny yep. when they arrived. <laughs> when they so arrived. Jerry Halliwell is officially my first. Barely, really. Wow. Yeah. Which one was she? Was she? She was ginger she, spice. Ginger, ginger spice. spice. Okay. Oh, I was cranky. Was like ginger, Boy. baby, scary, sporty, yeah, baby. and scary. Yeah, yeah. They were. They, I remember them being a huge thing, but I was never like. I didn't really care. I, I just think the only reason I had any interest in that movie because I think whoa, Roger Moore is in whoa. it at some point, and I was like, he oh, is, I love yeah. Roger Moore. He's, many, he's, at many points. I just, yeah. Rich, just Richard E. Grant references. Yeah. I yeah. love stuff like that. That was always when I was a kid. That was such a nerdy thing. I would be like, "Wait, other people know who James Bond is too? That's so cool! They're making this joke." My my cousins like were that. super into it, and yes, they were as massive as you think they were here, Raul. Like they were Backstreet Boys, in sync type level, big. You know, who and I also love, came, huh? I also love Backstreet Boys. Oh, of course, as you massively. should. Uh, yeah, they were pretty massive, but yeah, I feel like as I aged, I my tastes would change and i feel like i was into ginger spice first and then it became baby and then mm, that's problematic well as you got older you preferred well he's talking about he's older going from eight to nine yeah <laughs> okay no cool. no yeah older Not like from i was like... into ginger when i was 11 but now as a 30 year old <laughs> i prefer baby spice <laughs> Go, going from like age I, 10 to it? 13 i, I became like, no like a what... ginger to a baby fan i feel um, like baby was always made me uncomfortable like, there's something about the, you know, it just, it was too much. See, the thing is, we say that now, but I, I'm with Andy. The reality yeah. was, I think ba Baby was, like, a fan favorite. No, Ginger was a fan favorite. When we first Whenever I said I love Ginger, period. Whenever I said that I love Ginger, everybody was like, you're fucking crazy. Baby Spice is the hottest. Like, I feel really? like I get shit for liking Ginger. Yeah. But I'm with you, though, in the sense that my palate or taste changed because I went, I I've only ever bounced between Scary and Ginger. I guess it was just baby and ginger for me. I never really felt anything for posh. Watching don't tell, the movie. Don't tell Victoria if you see her. Don't tell. Don't let her know. <laughs> don't let her know. Don't let her know. Yeah, but like, shout movie. out to Scary Spice, man. She got the stuff. She. No be. They're all. They're all dancing around and stuff, and she's the only one dancing. Like got the, she got the Ziga Ziga. Yep. Yep. Yeah, she did get the Ziga Ziga. And what a music video that is. You can. Uh, you well, know what I mean. You think about it right now. You, you can picture it. The one shot throughout that weird yeah. mansion. Amazing. Mm -hmm. The Nick, girl power. Nick wishes he could film something like that one. He wishes yeah. he could make art like that. Yeah. Your mouth I always obvious. thought that that mansion was the same mansion that Backstreet Boys shot at the Everybody video. It's absolutely not. But that's like the coolest headcanon I've ever had. Hmm. I will say that so Two Become One, which I feel what, what like was their second or third song that they came out with after Wannabe. Um, all of the, It was the easiest metaphors for sex, mm -hmm. but to kids... Yeah. It was almost like you know you know what two become one is right you know what that you know what put it on means right <laughs> condom <laughs> and we were so impressed that we got all the metaphors within the music <laughs> but so it was deep. also educational yeah, right. really what you think of that Very true. that was one I remember like my mom had that CD and she'd be playing it all the time and in the car as we drove around I remember not even being a little bit uncomfortable when two become one because you're not I'm not thinking on that level of two become one it's only mm. later you know what I mean a little bit later you're like wait a second. They're talking about a little bit of this. You know what I mean? Shouldn't have been listening out of my mom, probably, but that's how it is. It's a slap, though, to this day, man. All, all the songs rocking. are so good. There are a couple that are the, the ones that aren't so much the, the main hits that when mm -hmm. they came on, I was like, oh, this is, the, yeah, the B-side Spice songs. Like, they're still good songs, but the, the writing is, is a lot lazier. Like, there's one that's just, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Over and over and over and over. I don't know if there's Kids any other lyrics. I don't What's know. What's the exactly? metaphor there? And like their dance form no. is just going like this. <laughs> no. Like, Good for you guys. No, Tim, Tim, no. That, come on, come. That isn't their song. You're talking about what's in the movie? Mm-hmm. That might be a Gary Glitter song. And you, <laughs> Gary, Gary Glitter was a rock star in the UK who uh, had one of the, who got, Bill Cosby, right? Uh, oh, he did a lot of these. Wait, albums. Like he made a documentary about that guy. It's on Netflix, no, that was right? Jimmy Savile. Oh, okay. Full stop. Full stop. I'm sorry. I don't know who this man is, so we need to be very clear right now. You said he got Bill Cosby. So Bill Cosby roofied this man, or this man roofied people? No, I just meant that Can't all be. of his goodwill, me too, and all the things Thank he you. did, he was he it was disgraced, and he turned out to be a very very it's prolific. Yes, yeah, offender, pedophile, whatever. Um, and then they mm. reused his music in the Joker movie. Okay, so the bump, 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 b
That's with, a, with that's all his... due respect, to everybody. That's the Chicago Bulls song. All right. <laughs> From the that is 90s. true. That is all true. Right. Oh so just, just show respect where respect is. You know what I mean? I, got, like, um, I, I understand uh, this guy. He was a pedophile, right? Wasn't that the deal? I think I remember when this was a headline. We're I'm looking at yeah. sex offenses. Here we go. I'm looking at. <laughs> I might be wrong. <laughs> I'm just double dude, checking. He's in the UK I'm, database. He's got yeah, sex offenses. He, he was just, uh, arrested originally in 1997 for discovered uh, pornographic images of children on the hard drive of his laptop, uh, and it gets worse from there. Did he pass away? I'm just double checking that that's the song. Because I don't want to. It says Smash that Mouth. Sounds right. Smash Mouth going to do that. They didn't, they didn't do the Chicago Bulls. They didn't do the Chicago Bulls. Oh shit. Maybe I'm wrong. It wasn't Gary Glitter. I feel like that was his song. Come on. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. PS Wee in the chat says it's still used for like any sport event. That's fine. It's the Chicago Bulls song. <laughs> Everyone knows that. Hey, hey, bah, 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 bah. all right so well, it's also to alive. be clear it is the pedophile song or the chicago bulls song but now i'm also <laughs> getting it, oh it's any sports song i don't care what the cleveland auto racers were doing at their back destruction derby and they played it when they got their little train cup you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> so i just did it in google <laughs> And at first I've got Smash Mouth, but then I've done Come On, Come On three times. And now it says it's it's Come On, Come On, Come On, Come On, Chameleon. And I say, <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's Karma Chameleon. No, Roll, you're right, though. I got it here. The song is actually called Leader of the Gang. And it is by yes, Gary Leader Glitter. of the Gang. There yeah. you go. Leader of the Gang. All right, I was right. And the song we were just talking about is called, is that called Rock and Roll? Is that the one we're thinking of? And then Spice Girls redid it. Yeah. A lot Man, of research the, being done on the, the show. The Spice right Girls now. would be so problematic, you know. Ooh. You know what I mean? But yeah, Spice Girls, what a phenomenon! Tim, <laughs> I know my you mentioned what it, Tim, you mentioned your head cannon, mm -hmm. and this is just going to be a random thing that I may not get any response. Okay, but when you think of the first Pearl Jam cover art, do you, can you picture it? No, the, the pink hands. with the hands reaching the hands. up. Yeah, mm -mm. and it's like the hot pink in the background. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's, it's like, like that was like Pearl Jam's kind of like, yeah, fucking Jeremy, oh, yeah. fucking. Uh, for it's whatever a great reason, album, by the way, you're not doing it justice. Oh, I mean, it's incredible. It's like incredible. one of the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for whatever reason, when I would watch wrestling as a kid, yeah, I thought Brett the Hitman Hart was the lead singer of Pearl Jam. <laughs> <laughs> Can he, he looks like Eddie Vedder. Sure, and it's, not? it's not really because of I've seen Eddie Vedder. It's because of just the pink. It was just the mm -hmm. hot pink. Mm -hmm. Whenever sure. I see pictures of of, oh, yeah. of uh, Brett the Hitman Hart, and I would see like him with the big pink uh, like reflective glasses. Yeah. Yeah, For whatever cool. reason, I thought he had something to do with Pearl Jam, or I thought maybe he was a lead singer. And I don't know why I created that. I never as a kid thought to look into it. That's just what it was to me. And that's yeah. so interesting that we create that headcanon without even thinking to do a little bit of research. Well, <laughs> this goes back to earlier with I've never seen Encino Man or uh, Biodome or any of that stuff. I've also never seen a lot of the more like actiony stuff that Nick talks about. So mm -hmm. until this conversation, I thought Encino Man was like Demolition Man. And I thought that Biodome was like Thunderdome. Oh, no. Oh, or Water wow. World. Oh, didn't we watch Encino Man like a lot growing up at my house? Mm -mm. You probably did. You I don't think I've ever it. seen Polly Shore. Wait, on a screen. We oh, definitely we watched in the army movie. now. Like we've seen them in the army now a bunch of times. That was a movie that we watched all of the time in my house, all of the time. Oh. Tim, if you, I mean, obviously we all have these these embarrassing moments that crop up. Some of us during the Top Gun in review, where we think that the green stuff in the water was shock repellent. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't know that for the longest time. Rahul, you know when Goose dies in Top Gun spoilers, and they yeah. go into the water and there's all that green stuff around them. I thought it was the I thought it was shock repellent because I watched that <laughs> Batman movie. The Adam West Batman movie, <laughs> and 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 Kevin let it go for a second, and then he was like, "Wait a minute, wait a minute." He wait just minute. <laughs> Nick just said it without any passing thought, and we oh all just go. And I was like, "Huh, that's interesting." Oh, who's that? I'm being attacked. It's uh, it's our dog, rabbit dog. No, sorry. <laughs> It's like, damn, he's really offended about it. You were talking about dumb kid stuff. Here it is again. I, I think I've talked about this. But I've never shown it. Uh, 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 Tim, when you look at this, what do you see? This is the U.S. Postal Service old logo. What do you see? Eagle. When I was a kid and we'd be behind the postal truck, I thought this was a top hat. I thought this was a hat. And it, it, was, it was quite a revelation. It's kind of like the FedEx logo when you see the arrow yeah. in there that I was like, oh, you know what? That's, a, that's an eagle. And I think it was that? actually about it. It is an eagle. Oh, no, it is an eagle for sure. No, it is an eagle. 
It looks like a witch's hat, maybe. Like, sure, yeah, you know what I mean. Like, again, you're a dumb <laughs> kid. You know what I mean? Where I would, like, it's more the top portion of it coming over. Like, there's a stiff breeze blowing <laughs> sure. the hat yeah. one way, and I guess another breeze going the other <laughs> way. It's like oh, a I Salvador Dali it. hat. Because you're a kid, you don't know. We're saying how dumb kids are. It, it kind of looks right? like Giles' hair, right? Is that exactly. what you're saying? Exactly. Yeah. Mm. Or like Johnny Bravo. I'm kind of getting like some Johnny Bravo sure. vibes. I can see Johnny Bravo too. You see a hat or an eagle wearing a hat? <laughs> no, I never saw an eagle. I never saw an eagle. Uh, <laughs> I'm, a know, yeah, I'm a kid. How well did I know an eagle at the time? I hadn't met one yet. I hadn't seen one. Yeah. What do you got, Rahul? So I'm going to um, um, G up my sister here, who we were G big. A grass up. We grass? say grass up, no, like snitch. Know. Oh, you oh, don't okay. use that. Okay. okay. No. okay. Grass is a snitch. Mm? Okay. Um, okay. So my sister for years thing. thought that um, in the Matrix, his name was mm. Neil. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Sure. And it took a few years before I heard her quote it and go, my name is Neil. And I was like, whoa, 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 hold on. Let's just slow, the, <laughs> slow down here. You thought he changed his name from Thomas Anderson, hacker known as Neil. Um, <laughs> and she was going around for years thinking that. <laughs> I've seen a TikTok just like that. And it's, it's fucking beautiful. perfect. Like the, the same reaction was had there of like, okay, we have Morpheus. We have fucking Trinity. Um, we've got yeah, Cypher, Trinity. What was the hacker got, guy's name? A Cypher. Yeah, so yeah, I forget Tank and Dozer. And then we got and we have Neil. Neil. <laughs> <laughs> and he's the one. He's the one. That's really funny. That's Neil really is the funny. fucking one. Similar. Another dumb kid thing. Um, I always thought that the U-Haul trucks that always have like there's always U-Haul trucks that have illustrations on the side. It's always yeah, like usually something states or something commemorating. Yeah, fucking yeah. here's the fish here's of whatever the ocean. I always thought that whatever was on the side of that was being contained in the U-Haul. Yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. That's awesome. And so uh, for a lot of it, it was like because you know I would drive. You know, I did a lot of road trips as a kid, going from the Rio Grande Valley to Austin back and forth, and. I would always see like cattle being pulled by tra trailers sure. and shit, sure. you know? And so whenever I saw a U-Haul, like I'd be like, oh, that thing is carrying those fish or that thing is carrying these animals. But then I started seeing like a dinosaur was on one and I was like, all right, something's the fuck, <laughs> something's up here. And maybe, but then other ones would be like, here's a canyon on the side of it. I was mm -hmm. like, all right, this is totally throwing my theory for a loop. And that's where dumb kid became slightly less dumb kid. Those are the kind of things where you hope as a kid, like they, oh, you're moving to U-Haul or U-Haul. You're moving to Utah. We'll give you the U-Haul with Utah on the side. Yeah, right? exactly. Like that's the kind of thing. Yeah. We're like, that's Thank you, Kevin, sense. for bringing this up. Here, we have a lot of poinsettias here in this U-Haul. Good old Alabama. See, poinsettia? Shout out poinsettia. There. Are, are those poinsettias? Lilac? Like orchids. Or, yeah, yeah, that's what I, I no, initially thought that? orchids too, but looking at them, I might be wrong. Them. They might be well, lilies, can, maybe. It might be a hat. I don't know. <laughs> it could be a uh, fucking hat. I, I only that. found out till embarrassingly recently um, that a pickle isn't its own vegetable and that it's a cucumber in pickle yeah, juice. Yeah. That's, that's a good tough one. one. That's a tough one. I'm glad. Well, you, 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 oh, you oh, but it, it, everything else, right? It's pickled and then what it is, right? right so right. it's pickled onion. But then you just got a pickle and it's like, oh. Because it's the king. Well, this is what's I, you know, Rahul, I wouldn't go that far. I know very well that a cucumber becomes a pickle because I'm a big pickle fan. But it was then offensive when I'd go to these like hoity toity bars or breweries, right? And they'd have right. pickles on the thing. And I'm like, yeah, I'll get the plate of pickles or whatever. And then they bring out a bunch of fucking garbage. Here's some cauliflower and a carrot we toss into some fucking. Thank you. It's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> You said, yeah, this is helpful. you said on your menu, pickles. I want pickles. I don't want pickles. Any, I don't want picking corn on the cob. I want a pickle. You said pickle. Give me a pickle. That killed me, Kevin. This is bringing up a picture, <laughs> of, a picture of pickles. Just in case anyone didn't know what it was. Visual reference. <laughs> it's helpful. There's somebody else out who didn't know. That oh, fucking got me. No, that's well, fair. Did you, when you, sorry, have you on. heard of uh, eating popcorn with pickles at movie theaters? It's crazy. I don't like pickle. I don't like it in a burger. I throw it away. Oh. I hate them. I don't want anything to do with them. Adding it to popcorn, it's like <laughs> Glack Gary glitter offensive. That's a throwback uh, to the wow. yeah, that was a good the throwback. pedophile from earlier. <laughs> that's, oh, that's, oh, that's how right. offensive that is to me. Wow. Okay. Damn. I mean, don't it. knock it till you try it. it. I like. 
Well, you don't you don't like pickles to be good, so that no. it wouldn't even make sense. It wouldn't. I I I like pickles as much as you like horror. Oh, okay. Thousand dollars, he'll eat a pickle. So a whole bunch? Huh? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm 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 cheaper than that. That's just insane. Mm. <laughs> Andy. That's just ridiculous. I do it for charity for five bucks, of course. Because charity, I'd do it for less. As long as mm. I get the money. You know, I would have you ever had it. a Claussen pickle or you just did you have a Vlasic or like a homemade pickle? Because there's a lot of different pickles out there. <laughs> that could, like, change I'll, I'll be honest with you, most of the food groups I've had, yeah, if they're not at McDonald's, I'll probably haven't had them. Okay. <laughs> okay. So when I talk about lettuce, I'm thinking of the lettuce in a Big Mac, a pickle sure, sure, in a sure. Big Mac. Cool. Um, well, and I, though. so what do you do when you get the, the, the cheeseburgers from McDonald's? You got to pull those pickles right pickles. off. I actually, if I'm doing, oh, I always um, have them take it out. And one of the good things about yeah, that is they never when you remove pickle, that means they make the burger fresh because really? they can't remove it. They have oh, to, because right. there could be an allergy. Right. Um, so, so you when get you, a when fresh you, when one. you mean fresh, you mean they open up that little plastic container they keep all the burger yeah. beat in. Uh, even, even more recent to you arriving than the one from this morning than the one that was rolled yeah, up yeah, and yeah, no yeah, one yeah. bought that but they're just like fuck it we're gonna put them i had two cheeseburgers for lunch let me tell you from mcdonald's and they were just delicious oh they're fantastic you know that bun, getting... it's you're a fluffy. father now you can't eat like you did like you did when you were 12 years old with a credit card 12 I think years you old double down i think you double down no, like, like, now it's like i know yeah. now it is i gotta fit i gotta fit the food in when i can fit the food in i tried to go to lucho's i was in the old i was in the old neighborhood for the old studio they were already closed I, up for the day if then, anything, the thing. What? if anything, Greg, I feel like you did your job. Like, but go all know. out. You Why didn't go out? I, just, I needed the sustenance. Ooh. I just had two burgers right there. No, I think he's. I think what Andy's saying is that like you can die. You You've done your job. You know, you what I mean? extended oh, the bloodline. Yeah, yeah, like, go yeah, ahead and yeah. eat. Yeah. Like You've, I'm not saying like ended girl, right guys, now. Guys, I think about it quite often. You know what I mean? Of like honestly, in Ben's eyes, I can only go down. You yeah, have so if, I, if I do just like and I'm gone, you know, either by like I'm dead or I actually die. Like, you know, if I just disappear from this kid's life, I'll just be like, oh man, my dad was really cool and did all this cool stuff, and yet I don't get to disappoint him, mm. you know. Well, you've but proved my- that you've got healthy sperm. That's done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, we got there in the end. Yeah, we got there in the end. <laughs> go, <laughs> go for it. And also, there's so much content of you, even yeah. if you were gone, you know what I mean? Like, what a what a treasure trove. AI. Kev- I was just saying, Kevin's got to be close to having an AI, an AI that can just learn. And then you guys have like the, from the comic books, the Tony Stark AI that's just here to talk to you. And you can just podcast with that Greg all the time. Yeah, but I mean, aren't AI? they trying how to do that AI? with Alexa, with dead people? Yeah, everybody yeah. flipped out. God, so many people with a stick up their ass. No. I, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. I want this AI to listen to an old wobbly recording of Abraham Lincoln. And then, yeah, I want to have a conversation with Abraham Lincoln. Is that so bad? You know, about yeah, want, about Fortnite. <laughs> exactly. I want to make it listen to Andy, and then I I get to have a conversation with Andy, and I get to post those voice memos. That'd be dope. But everybody out here up in arms about it. There's bigger Greg, problems right now. Greg started to talk about this, and everyone being up in arms. I was like counting down the seconds till the wheeze came. You know what I mean? And he got close a couple times, but he backed off of just that. Like, and I want to talk to Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was gonna come. <laughs> It was going to be Abraham Lincoln and some other celebrity. Yeah. 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 Well, it's because it's when there's this much truth to it, it's hard for me to get crazy with it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. If I'm, you I'm, could I'm, have a conversation with one dead celebrity, who would you choose? Polly Shore. Polly Shore, not dead. You can <laughs> oh. still do that. You probably just go to the Comedy Store LA. <laughs> I forgot. You could probably yeah, just go to that. the Comedy Store yeah. LA and talk to him right there, huh? I would. I'd love to. Huh. One dead celebrity. Christopher mm. Reeve. Oh, that's a great one, Greg. I watched him. I got to watch him speak when he was on tour uh, for the Paralysis Foundation. And like, geez, I don't even know. I want to put a date on it. I'll mm. say 96, 95, somewhere mm. in there. I don't know. And it was just awesome. It was so cool. And I don't even know if that doesn't matter even track with when he got paralyzed. I don't know. But it was awesome. Um, That'd be a good one. Yeah. I don't know if I have any. I would say maybe. Maybe Neil Peart from Rush. But he was such a quiet dude. That I don't know if I would want to. Well, I, like, <laughs> I just feel like I'd be bothering him. Like sure. it, yeah. he's just like he—he he was such a crabby dude. He never really wanted to talk to fans because he was such a a hermit. He never mm-hmm. really liked. He had like such anxiety about talking to the uh, his fans. I, the lyric: "I I can't pretend a stranger's a long-awaited friend." Like I'm not going to pretend that you're a friend of mine, fan. Like you're just a fan. Stay a fan. And I just feel like it'd be really yeah. weird for him. But maybe in the afterlife, he'd be a lot more gracious. 
Who knows? Well, I think Andy also, like, if you were to talk to him, like, you have now a lot of information you can give him, you know? We're like, yeah, you know, so that's like, what hey, I'm thinking about it. Really fucked up afterwards, mm. you know? I'm thinking that way too. And that, that's why I was like, I immediately jumped to either Paul Walker or Chester oh. Bennington. And I, I do that because I want to be like, I want to, I want to try to help them. But that's a weird thing. And I don't think I'd be able to help either of them. Well, you want to try to I help try. Them, like, like are you so well, you think you're time not, traveling? Yeah, I assume yeah, they yeah, stay dead. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I'm yeah. thinking about this wrong. Yeah, I thought about that. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you would just be giving him. You'd you just be giving a ghost unsolicited advice yeah. about how yeah. they could have yeah. not. Yeah. So yeah. Tim is yeah. Yeah. Tim, he's like, I'm already dead. <laughs> Tim is fucking Monday I, morning this is quarterbacking. Just rubbing Can you tell me about my children? <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell me about why? Just drop safer. No, I'm it's dead. It's coming from a good place. I can't undo it. I can't, yeah. Tim is Monday morning quarterbacking like, the drugs, man, you shouldn't have fucking, you know? Like, yeah, I know, bro. <laughs> like, all right, fucking shit. <laughs> yeah, um, I... I I often think about either talking to somebody um, like Neil Pert of that nature mm. or like Chris Farley is one. I think oh, Chris, Chris Farley is one that I would always awesome. love to go back. Or Steve Irwin. Like, mm, that's I, a great one. I think the one with Neil Pert, though, Kevin, is probably the craziest one because I would love it if angels didn't know what happened on Earth. Like if they just went yeah, to heaven, they just kind exactly of like, right. that's all it was. And then because Neil Pert died in January 2020. Little did Neil Pert know that he yeah. was two months away from the biggest. I'm leaving you guys in good hands. <laughs> Bye. Yeah, like Neil Pert, you don't know you're you don't know what you missed, bro. It's real bad down there. <laughs> like you went, you missed two two and a half years straight of just calamity all across the planet that you probably you know knew about somehow. You probably had some inkling of it. That's it. I just watched uh, the Great Outdoors over the weekend. Ah. John Candy. Yeah, anything about Dan John Aykroyd. Candy. That'd be so fun to spend. I just, I just oh, you want it. a big sandwich? Oh, it's it's a classic. It's a silly movie. Uh, very, very, very daffy. And I, it, it is one of those where I bet if you watched it now, you'd be like, hmm, okay. But I think when you watched it as a kid, it has that special place of nostalgia. Well, it's summertime. You. They go to the lake. Yeah. The, the, the one kid's got a crush on that girl. You know, there's the yeah. back and forth between Candy and Aykroyd in it. There's, there's the, the bear. bear. There's the guy the who got struck by him. Like, oh, my, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. They, they captioned the ca- raccoons way ahead of their time. <laughs> so good. Nowadays, Rahul, I swear to God, you go to the Megaplex right now. You choose a random theater. Great chance Megaplex. you're going to get a talking raccoon in it or a raccoon where they're just like totally like, oh, this raccoon's a big oh. part of the movie. And it's totally great because it's great. But this was cutting edge stuff okay. where the raccoons are chittering away in the trash and they're like putting up the captions and all this stuff. Uh, the bear I, yeah. busts in. Yeah, I watched two movies over the weekend. That, and these are two people, obviously, one of them still alive. But I also watched Little Shop of Horrors. Another great which one. Which was a movie that I had watched when I was a kid. And it was one of those moments where... Watching it now as an adult, and I'm sure I've seen it since, but I could have swore like the last time I saw it was when I was a little kid. I remember watching that being like, this movie is very fucked up and very inappropriate and like really scary and dark and twisted. But then everyone around you was like, oh, it's so funny. Look at Steve Martin. He's awesome. You're like, okay, Rick Moranis. He's awesome. I watched it last week and I was like, oh, no, this movie is fucking dark. It is. Is it good, up. though? Steve it's Seymour. It is a great, great, great movie. But I think. I don't know if you know about the how it was originally supposed to end, end, and they shot it, and they tested it, and everyone was like, this is this is way too fucked up. Because Seymour, like, kills people in this movie. not Maybe not directly, but definitely through inaction, he allows people to be killed. And the original ending of the movie was that it was supposed to, uh, the plant, Tui was supposed to kill Seymour and Audrey, eat them, and then take over the world. Yeah. And it was supposed to be sort of like, like a, the theme of it was like, your greed will eventually kill you. And like, you know, it'll be, it'll run rapid and all that stuff. But people are like, we like Rick Moranis so much. We want him to live at the end. But like, he killed people. <laughs> like, he shot, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? He was going to kill. Steve he was Martin's in a no win situation. You know, Audrey, too. She, it starts off the, not that it's cool. And then it's only eating bad people. And then it's eating everybody. Oh, like, well, Audrey's the name. Audrey and Audrey too. The plant yeah, name is Audrey too. I, I don't know why. I just thought that Seymour was the name of the plant. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I, told, I told my relatives a story when I was in um, my sophomore year in high school is when I started doing theater. And I auditioned for um, uh, the, the role of uh, Seymour. And I, I'd never read before in front of an, an, a group of people. And I picked up the script. And we were reading Crushed a scene it. where he had to say Tui, which, he, which was his pet name for Audrey too. And I read it as Twat. Mm-hmm. Then everyone started laughing, <laughs> and I did not. You're get like, I'm never doing this again. Bye. Nope. No, I, I was like, I was a, I was a, 
chorus member or something like that. I Suddenly, Seymour. Suddenly, Seymour. Standing that beside cool me. You. you know who's great in that is the Greek chorus. Is Everybody. the three singers in the back. That are, it's, a, it's a beautifully made movie because it's all made on the back lot. I think it was made. Um, what's the big theater? The, the, the Pinewood in, in London? Mm-hmm. Or double Pinewood, yeah. Set. yeah. yeah, so yeah. Apparently they, they shot it there and it's fascinating because they shoot it like it's a stage play. So a lot of the 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 stuff is purposely like drawn in the background and stuff like that to make you feel like it's this surreal sort of stage play thing. And it's really, really well done. And the anim the puppetry of of uh, Audrey too is incredible. But that movie is fucked up. Dude, I watched after I watched Spice World last night, I watched Babe. And <laughs> dude, I cried. I cried babe is, eyes, it's babe. fucking incredible. I thought what it was all this time. I thought it was just a kid's movie. It's not. It is yeah. a 10 out of 10 yeah. masterpiece of a film. And the puppetry in it is unbelievable. Like I'm watching this as a 32 year old man, 33, newly 33 year old man watching babe. And I'm like, I believe that these are animals talking. Yeah. <laughs> like it just freaking Dude, got me, man. It was that, so good. At the end of that movie when James Cromwell looks down at the pig. That'll do, pig. Goes, That'll do, pig. That'll Come do. on. I just start crying every single time. I think he won. Didn't he get nominated for that? He got nominated, he and it yeah. was a big deal because it was like the bare minimum of lines. Like yeah, I forget what the number is, but he had it like on the dot for what it had to be to be able to be nominated. He was he's from cool. Succession, right? He is. I, yeah, I think I'll get Revenge of the Nerds. Yeah, I was gonna say if you're Greg, he's the dad in Revenge of the Nerds for two scenes. I think I decided what dead celeb I'd like to chill with. Sounds mm. great. I'd like to chill with Tolkien. And I'd yeah. like to watch do a marathon with him of, of the Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit mm. and just see what he does. If he mutters or tuts or if he's like, oh, and then we'll watch Ring of Power and see yeah. how that goes. <laughs> I'd love to see how long he's, he hangs in there for The Hobbit. All three of those movies. Because <laughs> he's probably like, y'all know this was like one book, right? It was like, Dude, oh, every, every time I go back home to visit for Christmas, it's inevitable that... During Christmas time, Lord of the Rings are always on TV. Fantastic. Mm. Love it. Put that shit on every time. But, of course, on TNT, there's always one of the Hobbits. And I'll just begrudgingly watch it just in case maybe I was wrong. And fuck, man, it's just always so sad and disappointing mm. when you get to it. Battle of the Five Armies. It's like, why does this movie exist, dude? It is so ridiculous. Money. Like, I, I know people really want us to do it for interview, but I think it would break my heart in the way that, like, I feel like Transformers killed my spirit when we did Transformers <laughs> interview, but I think this would break my heart of like, it was so much potential, like just gone. But again, I always think Lord of the Rings is like, it's, it's a miracle. There's in all the other universes making three movies after the Lord of the Rings book failed, but in our universe, it worked perfectly. You know, I know. Yeah. We're getting clerks. Through. I, I agree. Well, uh, I don't want to end the podcast quite yet. Sorry, sorry, Greg. I was just clapping for Clerks Three. Oh, oh, you were talking about clapping for Clerks Three. Sorry. Um, whenever we hang out with, I've only hung out with him like once. Hunter Pence, who's a former baseball player. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hunter, it's like known like you don't talk to Hunter about baseball because he goes into a blind rage if you do. He's just like <laughs> I saw him kick true. James Burke in the chest once. <laughs> I don't think that's like, accurate. Hunter Pence is a nerd. He likes talking video games. He likes talking mm. Magic: The Gathering, and he's just he, he's a nerd. Um, he doesn't really want to talk baseball or his profession. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I never really get to talk to you about shit like this. And I know that you hate bringing up things like this just because of fan speculation. Shit gets annoying. Mm -hmm. Are there any roles that you'd be like, damn, I want that? I wish I, I wish I could be that. Yeah, it's, it's, it is, it, it soured me, man, for real. Like, it's fun until it's not fun, and then it's weaponized and thrown back at you, and like, like, you know, if you're a geek, and then someone spends time, their own time, and photoshops you as, fam as Reed Richards or Bruce Wayne or whatever the fuck's happened or. A, Carl Katan or whatever, the the fourteen year old Rahul is just like, what is going on? This is nuts, and it 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 really just it hits you right here, and it's just it's it's what just a wonderful feeling, and then you know, ultimately you post it, and then someone writes an article which has happened or like whatever, and they call you they see you panhandling and you're begging, and you're like, motherfucker, do you know how busy I am? Like, 
I and I've got projects that we're working on. I'm not I'm not out here hoping that one of these tweets hits and Kevin Feige goes, "Hey, saw your TikTok. We'd like to talk to you about." Like, of course, I don't think that. So I saw that fan Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I I it's it's just it just feeds that little thing, right? And um and it, it it's it's the same thing. It facilitates like doing Ghostbusters. You know, like. W- when you, when I that was my favorite franchise growing up, and it still I still it still is one of my favorite franchises. And then when you're voicing Tobin, like it blows my mind. And and that's the same thing when people are like, I could see him play um, whoever the fuck it, it it does. So anyway, that being said, um, yeah, I've got like a preference for each major IP. So if it's Star Wars, I think I would love to tackle um a revised version of Carl Katan. I think I'd fit the a build Sick. for that being a gamer. Um, for Marvel. Yeah. I mean, they're right. I, I probably Reed Richards is a, probably a decent fit for me considering the body of work I've done. Um, and for DC, probably wonder woman. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's just yeah. like Greg. No, one just, no one's. They want someone hotter than Gal. Yeah, sure. You <laughs> come to the right they place. Like mm-hmm. Makes sense. You know, you go out mm-hmm. of the frying. How do we? The steamer. Yeah. How do we replace her? Get someone hotter. Yeah. yeah. All right, everyone. Write yeah. the articles now. Okay. Perfect. Well, holy Comic- Wonder Comic- Woman. Comic- Comic- com or whatever. But there is. But I never speak of. That's the thing that I always remind everyone is like the things I'm actually in contention for, the things I actually care about, you will not see me go anywhere near that property. <laughs> I will not even admit to watching it on TV. Like, mm-hmm. it is, I, I'm not an idiot. So the things I will happily post, I don't care. I don't care whether I get them or not. Um, now, what's I, that? I, like, I, I, I know that this isn't how it works. I'm just being like, hey, you should be in this thing. And then you're like, cool, I will. But like, mm-hmm. There's this show right now called The Boys, and I fucking mm. love The Boys. Mm, and I feel yeah. like you would be so goddamn good in The Boys. So we got to make it happen. I mean, well, you already pissed off Jack Wade. He thought you didn't like him. So like that's how we had to settle that yeah. before. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We, yeah, yeah. I, I was shocked that he remembered that we met at the restaurant. Um, but no, I loved, I loved The Boys. And, and um, when I watched Carl Urban, I was like, shit, man, if they never made this 10 years later, I probably could have done something like that or, yeah. or 20 years. But um, no, it's a fantastic show. And I mean, those, those things do work. There's been many a time a tweet or something gets picked up by a de- You muted yourself, you're gone. Yeah, just saw that. Um, but yeah, that's happened recently where like a dev or someone, they see that I enjoy a franchise or I enjoy this or that. And they're like, would you... Would you want a voice? Or you and you and Kojima seem to be getting pretty buddy buddy over there, huh? Oh yeah, we're uh, we're that's thinking of mo- we're thinking of moving in together. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so serious, oh, you're <laughs> so serious, my bad. Uh, I'm the new, I'm I'm. Keely's using. not happy. I know. I photoshopped a picture of you know that meme where the guy's holding the girl's hand, but looking at the one. Yeah. I photoshopped all of it with me and Kojima and and Keely. <laughs> um, <laughs> great but but yeah i'm <laughs> I, I i that again like we met i met someone at anime expo who was dressed as um sam bridge or whatever yeah and i took a picture with him and he was like dude dude post it tag me because kojima's retweeted me before and i was like oh okay and i didn't want to say anything but he was like actually let me follow you now so i don't if you tag me i'll see it and I put my name in, and my pinned tweet is a picture of Kojima holding a picture of me at his studio, like that. Yeah, like that to me again is is one of those things where you're just like, all reality's been broken now about what's possible and what's not possible. I love it. It yeah. happens though, man. It's like when 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 people get behind something, real shit can happen, right? Isn't that kind of? I mean, I'm sure the the plans were in the works beforehand, but that's kind of how like you and McGregor came back to Obi Wan, right? Everyone's like, we fucking ran to see him again. He's like, I'll do it. And Disney's it, like, cool. For you sure, know? it does. I think it does. Yeah, there, uh, it does work. Sure. Like people pay. I think it's the grounds. Feige, Feige admitted that that we did the Krasinski thing for you. Yeah, this is what yeah. you wanted. So here, here it is. It does work, but um, I don't know, man. The it's universe funny. is it's funny. I found out that Dave Filoni knew who I was. That's, That's fucking yeah. Cool as hell. We met. We met at the Saturn Awards last year. Um, I was presenting Mike with the 
like lifetime version of whatever the Saturn version of that was, and and Jupiter Award. The what? Sorry. <laughs> no. Oh, the that. Jupiter Award. Correct. Oh, exactly. Thank you. You could have gone with Uranus. I, um, you know what? That you were thinking about it. Okay, it's fair enough. Fruit. He doesn't want it to. Yeah. yeah. Come on. I'm um, mad. But I, I, I had. We were just sitting at our table, which was Midnight Mass, and then I, they were doing the nominees for like something, and when the Mandalorian won. We heard a round of applause, and I realized that Dave Filoni and John Favreau stood up, and they were at the table next to me. Cool, and I was like, nice. "And um, at the e- once the show wrapped, and everyone starts getting up and getting to their cars or whatever, I just walked over to to Dave Filoni, and I was like, "I have to do this. I have to do this." And before, as I approached him, he clocked me, and he went like that, and he stuck his finger, and he went ah, and I went, and I just did it back. I don't know why, <laughs> and I went ah. The and then we list. circled around this table and he goes, I know you. And I immediately blew past that and was like, oh shit, can we get a live action Cad Bane? And he was like, I don't think so. I don't know. That would be crazy. And then I didn't realize they already had shot Boba Fett. So he was just like, I don't know. Um, and then once I had come down from that high and I was at home, I went, wait, knows me from what? <laughs> and I and I figured it was probably the tweets about rebels or live action this or whatever, but so it does reach to a oh, certain sure. degree. Sure. I don't think he meant he loved me in uh, Supergirl. He should have though. <laughs> yeah, but like, it, it, but also, you know, these Netflix shows that you've been doing, big fans of them, by the way. Jesus like, Christ. they have. He's done, huge, again. He's done it again, isn't it? He's done it. They've again. got huge reach and like have massive they? audiences watch these shows, so it's not like. It's, you know, a, a small indie, oh. but you're famous on the internet for fan stuff. It's like, no, these are gigantic sure. shows massive that I'm network. sure... Well, Kojima's... The whole thing with Kojima is just that he's a massive Mike Flanagan fan. Yeah. And and we didn't That's realize right. he was already tweeting about Oculus and, and, and Dr. Sleep. Like, it was already there. And it wasn't until... He tweeted something about mass. I saw it, and then he tweeted me calling me the sheriff. That we were like, "Whoa, hold on, what's going on here?" But so, like, but Kojima's a massive supporter of film and TV. Like, you see more of that than you do games, right? From him, it's it's it really is like this is this show's amazing, or I love this, and I love that he champions people like that. Like, I saw that you guys got to tell Jack that Kojima tweeted him, um, yeah. or about the show, or whatever, about his character, but. Um, yeah. It Kojima does. being on Twitter is my favorite thing of the last couple of years. There's been so much dark bullshit, but Kojima just tweeting about the Fast and Furious and just going film by film and just giving his thoughts is like, I couldn't ask for more. It's we had, everything. We had this uncomfortable moment. I was, I was here and I, I wrote something. I can't remember what the, the tweet was, but it ended with me saying, please masturbate. And then, you know, <laughs> when you, you know, when you make it into a quote, smart, right? Mm-hmm. Someone did that. So I had a picture of me and it said, please masturbate, roll Coley. And then I retweeted it and then Kojima quote tweeted it. Yeah, there you go. With like a smiley face, a rocket, a clap, or something. And Alana and I were sitting there going, Does he know what, what you just said? Or does he think it's a nice picture of you? And we debated, we were like, he knows it says, please masturbate, and Kojima's given a thumbs up, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and ultimately, I was, we, we went back and we were like, he, he knows, he, can, he knows what masturbate is, it's an easy translation, like, uh, and he speaks emoji, English as well. Fucking squirt emoji. Squirting out, <laughs> and a peach. But then um, I ultimately got so scared for him that like, maybe someone's going to go like, Kojima-san, this idiot actor that you like is disgusting. Stop retweeting him. <laughs> that I deleted. I removed all reference to it so that his tweet didn't make sense. Because I thought in uh. the in the morning, because I started to see verified people that were like, you know, people who wrote for Kotaku were all liking it, going, "What the fuck is this?" And I panicked. So me, we made the decision to delete the tweet and protect. Coward, you're a coward. It's very adult of you. 
You know, we've seen a lot of character from... growth from you for the last couple of years. <laughs> yes, yeah. you fail. The demon knows now. The jigs up. Rahul, what I want to talk to you about from Twitter is weird people coming into your room at 3 a.m. at hotels. But we're going to save that for the post show, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, of course, you can get that on Patreon.com slash Kind of Funny. Uh, this has been the Kind of Funny podcast each and every week for sometimes five best friends gather on this table. Each coming to hang out with each other. If you want to hang out with us, Patreon.com slash Kind of Funny, where the good times keep rolling with the post show. Of course, you can get the shows ad free over there. Of course, you can be watching live just like the Trog Knight Returns. Mike Allen, Cameron Kennedy are. Of course, you'd also get a whole bunch of bevy of benefits like me and Barrett doing the Q&A podcast over there. Next Gen Podcast. You know all about it. You understand. However, if you have no bucks tossed away, no big deal. YouTube.com slash kind of funny. Roosterteeth.com and podcast services around the globe each and every week. For now, we're going to go do the Patreon post show. Rahul. Have you, when, do we know, has it been announced when, when the next one's, when is the, the, the how, no, okay, okay. House of Usher is coming eventually to Netflix. When it does, you'll hear us talking about it. Mm. You'll be able to see all about it and stuff there. Mm -hmm. uh, anything else to promote that you could well, talk about? Got, we know that Ghostbusters is on the horizon. We do um, see everybody Ghostbusters Spirits Unleashed. Me, I Rahul. keep forgetting that, and you'd like this, Greg, um, I did a show with Zack Snyder uh, called, um, <laughs> what's it called there, buddy? God, Twilight of the Gods. Okay. And um, I don't know when that's out, but I feel like that that something, some new update should be coming up at some point somewhere, but it's a, it's a show from Zach. Um, yeah, that's it. Is that it? I don't know what I can. I can't. I don't I'm know. looking at your IMDb. I think yeah, I'm just going to reverse out of it. <laughs> yeah, you're fine, you're fine, that's cool you're as fine. hell though congrats yeah i didn't hear about that you gotta tell me about that i don't know what that's all about it's like mm. you gotta be you gotta be careful if one slip of the mind one moment where you can't remember something and it's like other friends would help and support you and try to cover that these guys just like to listen to the silence you know hey this cast this cast is pretty cool man jessica henwick from jurassic world fallen order greg or whatever yeah. it's called fallen kingdom that's dominion. cool yeah, dominion lauren cohen from walking dead mm. hell yeah jamie chung from mm. my high school. This is cool. <laughs> pretty cool. Love Andy, cool. you and I have tweeted about, <laughs> have DM'd about Jessica Henwick. Oh yeah, big fans. Big we've crush. had we've had fights. Big crush on her. Yeah. Is it? Who was the, who was the most recent one we argued about? Elizabeth Olsen. What did you Elizabeth? argue about these Wait, people? What the fuck are you arguing about, Elizabeth Olsen? <laughs> Like you're, it was, it's just usually it's just toxic male shit like yeah, stay, like away, stay from, away from uh, oh because andy's I'll, always trying to act like he's gonna marry uh, these women right. yeah, yeah but out. recently oh my gosh the articles that came out about her revealing that she got married and everybody tagging that me must have been a bit that must have been a big that was a big I mean, week betrayal for your was relationship <laughs> your relationship day. with elizabeth olsen that must have really been affected by the fact that she turned out she got her she's married to find day. out there yeah yeah you hate to see it after she really strung you along all these years the same week movies the same week Dario got married, that came out too. So you oh. got a, a, bit, a bit of a two combo there. Oh, and then, oh my. yeah. Do you ever think this is why Selena Gomez doesn't respond to your TikTok comments? Is because she knows you're cheating on her with all these other fictional relationships. That comment on her TikTok, by the way, like past 10,000 likes. <laughs> <laughs> what did she you say? Because uh, uh, a while back, Raul, uh, well, hey, welcome to the post show, everybody. Let's cut to the post show. We're on the <laughs> post show now. Come with us, <laughs> patreon.com. That's kind of funny. <laughs> Um, uh, when I got verified on Twitter, my mom just automatically thinks that that puts you in some different category. And she was like, oh, it does. Yeah, we're special. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you just kind of was like, and the totally serious, not a joke at all. was like, you should date Selena Gomez. Yeah. That's like, a huge compliment. You should do that. And I was like, like, that's cool. All right, she mom. She loves you that much. Well, I'll work on that. Thank you, mom. And so uh, she posted, uh, I just saw some TikTok that Selena Gomez posted and it popped up on my For You page and I commented, Selena, my mom thinks that we should date. Mm -hmm. um, just letting you know, throwing that out there. And that comment is like past 10,000 likes uh, on her, on her, you know, on that video or whatever. And all of the comments are either people from our community or people don't don't even know who I am that are like, yeah. Andy, thank you so much for, you know, giving my mom uh, the liver that she needed. You know, that that surgery was. Oh, successful. they're giving you the wingman. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, How old is this? How old is this video? Like if someone else wrote the same thing. The video is. Do don't even try. Don't even try. Like gone. Maybe two or three months old. Oh, shit. Okay. 
from it's what I understand too, like Selena Gomez doesn't even use TikTok anymore, so you shouldn't get you shouldn't go looking. From what you understand, Andy, I, I, I don't see you with Selena Gomez. I I see you. The person I genuinely would like you to have a date with is that boomer girl, Nico. Nico, mm -hmm. I, I Nico met. Lowe. I I got to meet her. Uh, Nico uh, happily has a boyfriend, and now we're just like whenever she gets brought up, I'm like best friend Nico, like. And like, of course, she just kind of knows me by name and she followed me on, on Twitter. And that's about as far as the relationship goes. But to whenever people ask, it's like, hey, for all the Patreon people out there, if anybody asks, like, we're best of friends. Best mate, Nico. Yeah. Ah, Nico. Yeah, Nico. Nico or Nico? Nico. Nico, okay. Yeah, it's like Nicole, but it's like a, a kind of a, a Latin thing. You know? Rahul, huh? you made waves in my household a couple days ago. Did I? By tweeting that at 3 a.m., mm. two randos came into your hotel room with a key card. What yeah. the fuck happened? And what was the, what's the fallout then since then? So I'm not going to say the hotel's name just yet because I believe Netflix, they're taking, I think they're taking it pretty far. Okay. Because um, that, that, that hotel was used for production as well. Um, so what happened was I was moving out and because I was checking out at six in the morning so i so and and my best mate aaron was with me helping me just pack my stuff that i've had for six months oh, so, so we you've were, been staying in this hotel room for six months yeah it's been my room since january got it and and i've left at certain periods for three to four weeks and just left things in my room like i've had watches there and jewelry and scripts and whatever the fuck and playstations or whatever and so i happen to be not only awake but fully dressed with sneakers on in the middle of packing shit with my boy who's also aaron is like six foot two anyway so this was the it it it, it wasn't alarming at the time because i never felt threatened or or whatever so what happened was um, i just heard the unlocking of a door the you know electronic yeah, yeah. the distinction and at three in the morning i was like the fuck why aren't the staff knocking before they walk into a room so immediately as i hear that noise i go whoa 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 hey as this door opens and two guys walk in and they're a bit like taken aback and they look at me and aaron and they're like yo um uh i don't think this is our room or whatever they were saying and i was like what the fuck's going on and the guy sort of like was stumbling through and he was like, oh, uh, what's your name? Is it Rahul? And I went, yeah. And he went, oh, my cousin's name's Rahul. They must have, they've got confused and given me your key card. And I was like getting him out. And I was like, all right, cool, cool, cool. Whatever the fuck, cool. Get out, whatever. Shut the door. And then me and Aaron, we stopped for like five minutes and we're like, that was weird. That seems fishy. <laughs> but then it was like, wait, the scenarios of how bad that could have been yeah. started to rattle us both up. Because I was just like, what the fuck? Two dudes just walk in, whatever. And I was just going to leave it there and not do anything about it. And then it was like, what if that was one of my co-stars? What if I was asleep? What if my lady was there? You start going of off, course. right? Yeah. So I go downstairs and I get to reception and the, and the guy at reception, young fella, he was standing there and I go, um, hey, I'd like to make a complaint, please. And, and he was like, okay. And then the guy who had walked into my room was still in the lobby sitting down. And he went, yo, hey, it was a mix-up. It, it was my fault. I was like, I'm not fucking talking to you. It's not about your mix-up. It's about the hotel. Yeah, yeah. And then so he backed off. And I was like, hey, you just gave someone my key card without authorization. Do you know how serious that is? And the guy went, I'm really sorry. There was a mix-up. And he was stifling a smile and a laugh. And I was like, why the fuck are you smiling, dude? Like... This is mad serious. That, 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 that could have gone a million times worse than it was. You didn't make a phone call. You didn't do that. And he's like, I'm sorry. I messed up. Sorry. And then the smile came back. And I was like, get your oh, fucking you manager, fucking dude. Yeah. Get your fucking manager. Guy comes out. He, he's like, okay. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, no. I, I don't Fuck want this, this to get. Shit. Yeah, like, I don't want you to get fired, dude. All no, I want is for you to be a fired. To, yeah, Next time just call me. I'm just not on a power trip. Yeah, I'm I'm not on a power trip. I don't want someone to lose their job. I I've worked in retail. I've worked in 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 in, in uh, public facing jobs. I've fucked up a million times. Once, little like little story. 
I locked a kid in my shop while I went for a cigarette. <laughs> I didn't know there was a toddler in the shop who just walked in and I shut, I, I closed the shutters to go for a, a smoke. I came back, opened it, and then I heard like, it was like a Jurassic Park, like, so what the fuck? And I look, five year old, six year old, and I was like, oh. <laughs> and I just let him walk back into where the mall or whatever. I was like, I don't know what the fuck get that the was. Get the fuck out. Get the fuck out. Did they ever blow <laughs> back on you? Did they ever come back? No. Like, but okay. if they did, I wouldn't laugh. I yeah. wouldn't be like, sorry. <laughs> what? So I'm like, dude, you're making me escalate this. I, I don't need you to beg. I just want you to, uh, to appreciate the seriousness of what you've done. And they wouldn't. So the manager comes out and he's just like, yeah, I'm sorry. Shouldn't have done that. We'll train him. I was like, that's it. This is That's bad. This. I'm yeah, I, like, this is this is this is bad. And then he goes. He said something that pushed me further, and I ended up going, "Okay, dude. Also, not that it means anything different, but this is a production account. You know, it's a production account. So there are there are people that this that the, 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 the studio are counting on you protecting their privacy, and you just let someone into the fucking room, dude. Yeah, yeah. Still nothing. And I was like, you know what? Cool." I don't, there's no, nothing more I could do. So I literally just went back to business and I knew, I tweeted about it because once, it went, I don't know why, like, I, I never named and shamed. I'm not trying to dox anyone. Yeah, I yeah, was yeah. just, I just need to vent. And then Ricky Gervais was like, I, that's how it started because Ricky went, fuck that. You need to fucking take this further. And as soon as I knew Ricky, uh, Ricky had engaged with it, I was like, "Oh no, this is yeah, going to go viral." And then it just like the pile on, and I was like, and then I got, I checked out at like six in the morning. I was at the airport, and I flew back to LA. And when I got off the plane, it was Netflix. My my producer Trevor Macy and everyone was like, "Yo, that's fucked." Um, yeah, that's really unsafe. And um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I haven't followed up with it. I look. It took. I it took don't me a want while someone to... to lose their job. I don't want someone no, no, to lose no, their job, not. man. That guy should for sure lose his job. That guy's I not know. taking people's safety seriously, and the manager should lose his job too. That's a very serious fucking thing. It is. You're, yeah, that's that's really serious. And I know we should shouldn't... legitimately have been like, oh, I know Rahul's staying there, and let's just go fucking go into his room and steal all his shit, or yeah. worse, what or the worse. Fuck else? Yeah, the thing is, like, I'm. I. I. I don't. I feel like I'm the version of I'm the best case scenario. These For dudes sure. walked into a room. I think it was a genuine mistake, and they just happened to be two big boys moving, packing an espresso machine. Right. <laughs> right. That's as bad as it got. And immediately they got a yo yo, and they were like, "That was it. It was done." Now my mind races to opportunists, and opportunists being, what if I wasn't in my room and totally my lady was asleep on the couch. Right. And that's why I'm like, and that's where, when I think that scenario through, I'm like, you need to lose your job. Yeah. yeah. Something has to happen. I guess should not be working in a place where people's safety are in his hands. And I, I got the victim blaming. I got the victim blaming thing where people are like, Hey, why don't you just deadbolt it? That's what deadbolts are for. Motherfucker. Wh- there are, m- there are many a time where you don't need to deb. You don't deadbolt your hotel room. It could be that your loved one is at work or they're out. And if they you they still need access to the room, so one right. may be asleep or it's it's a violation regardless. It's not on me for not deadbolting yeah, the totally. Oh, call. you're gonna run like yeah, yeah, they, but it's you're gonna it's have people we... being like I should have Airbnb. Like that's get there's gonna be all sort of <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is the yeah. kind of shit that drives me nuts. And this is when and, and you know, I'm right there with you because it sets me off when I go, Hey, there's a clear mistake here that you can you have to recognize. And when people don't recognize it, that's when I get super pissed. Because I feel like that, and I don't want to sound like that old crotchety old man, but I feel like that is an escalating problem with the world. People are just like, I don't care. And I'm like, you know what? Then I have to make you care. Even if it's just for this one fucking second, Mm -hmm. you just need to understand the gravity and the severity of what you've done to another human being just for one second. And then you can go back to just your blissfully ignorant, oblivious life. But Right now, you got to learn from this or else people don't. It's I mean, that guy, he's either going to learn or he's got to go find another job. Either way, he's going to he's something's going to happen in his brain that makes him think for a second, at least hopefully that what he did was unacceptable. And the manager should be fired, too. For sure. It's really 
That guy should have the, the correct response should have been, I'm so sorry, sir. This will this has never happened before. It'll never happen again. I will let me get you a different room. Let me do whatever the fuck I can do to make this right in your brain. Even if yep. they don't mean it, just fucking recognize it. Yes. That's really all it is. <laughs> yeah. There can't be apathy it. when when being Give me you your know, thoughts and prayers. I just want give me your empty right. thoughts and prayers. <laughs> yes. Just like but mean it just just say it enough that I can go because I want to get about my day. You're right. a kid. I don't want to like um, again, this could have been a million times fucking like, oh worse. God, we're gonna have a we're gonna you know have a conversation about this. I'm so sorry. Like just something yeah. like that. You yeah, can't but, just but, be like, you know, Oof, uh, you know what the happens. apathy means to me? The apathy because I'm a paranoid person. The apathy to me means there's something happening here. Like the guy's like, sorry, dude. I'm like, are you guys friends? Like, how the fuck do you know? Like, do you know each other? What's happening here? Why? Or is that guy laughing? Why are you laughing? What? Do I, I that's know what about I suspected. I suspected that they knew because I was like, why yeah, is the customer throwing himself under the bus like this and getting right. involved? Because that dude, the 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 bullet he was taking was almost like I don't want him. To you get could fired. get you could get fucked up here because right. you're above the counter with me, and I'm now quite heated. And like you're, I I, I felt that there was a relationship, yeah, uh, between the two of them. But but yeah, you stay I, in that hotel again for sure. Yeah, oh, man. Yeah, you know, but, you know, it's bad when Ricky Gervais is like, "Let's get in." <laughs> well, yeah, when I, I wanted to bring up that when Rahul brings up, uh, and then Ricky Gervais, I thought you were saying like, you know, when you're just having a conversation with your friends, and and you're like, and then fucking Barbara Streisand over here fucking does, and like you're just kind of saying, that, <laughs> I thought you were saying that somebody was emulating Ricky Gervais, but you were actually talking about Ricky Gervais, the real, in, the real Ricky. I didn't see the real that Ricky on Gervais. Yeah, I that's it's that. always it, it always feels like when something like that happens. The engagement goes up, so it was. It, I, I, you know, I thought something like that would be like our friends would see it. Greg would, you know, you guys would see it, and you'd be like, "That's fucked up." And and it was a reminder of like for all of us, particularly who are public facing or have a profile, a, a profile. Shit, maybe we should consider maybe having not our real names or using more dead. Right. It's just a reminder for everyone, and 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 not just for people, but for vulnerable people. And and I right, said, right. check in under Andy's name so no one will care about me. Yeah. I use I, all I, of Andy's information. I, I do have I do the do paranoid anything. thing every once in a while, like not not even joking because I've Greg, imagine just, Selena Gomez shows up to your room. <laughs> like, oh, and she's, and she's story, so Selena. fucking uh, embarrassed. This actually, this actually uh, this is oh, gonna go Andy. bad. <laughs> she's so <laughs> embarrassed that that's it. She, she's yeah, not she even, doesn't she definitely doesn't feel like Here's how that would go. Here's how that would go. Knock on the door. Oh hey, I'm I'm looking for Andy Cortez. They told me that it was this was his room. Greg just dead eyed. I've never heard of him. I don't know who he is. <laughs> <laughs> and he'd bring it up on the podcast. Yeah, he would tell you two weeks later after he puts something on your car. I wanted to say real quick, like I've only had that issue because I'm just generally paranoid about everything, Rahul. But I've had mm. one Uber Eats person recognize me, oh. and I've had my student loan person recognize me who was on the phone dealing with my credit history and credit card and social security number and they're like are you andy cortez from kind of funny i was like yeah <laughs> i was like Dude. and at first i thought i was cool i was like oh but I, i'm really worried Ooh. about this and i shouldn't be because this is a professional on the other end but it still kind of freaked me out no you know? dude i'm it, it the thing is like i've seen with doxing and stuff sometimes it is people who've abused their position of course like dude yesterday i'm not even making this up i swear to god yesterday the the dude <laughs> I know he means well, man, but it's so violating. I, I opened the front door. So I, I got a knock and it was FedEx. Mm -hmm. And I was like waiting through the peephole, like, <laughs> where's my miniatures at? <laughs> like it was, it was actually Nespresso pods. And I was just like that. And I, I was just stand there and I'm like, okay, he's dropped the Nespresso's. Still standing there. The Nespresso's have been what's dropped. <laughs> and then he knocks again. And I'm like, do I have to sign for Nespresso? What the fuck? <laughs> So I open it and then there's an espresso on the floor and he's standing there and I went, all right, thank you. And he went, and he picks up on the floor and he hands it to me. And I went, do you want me to sign for something, dude? And he went, no, I'm just, I really like you on Funhouse. And I was like, oh, don't say it. Enjoy, like, if you got it, cool. You just made me feel violated. I get it. Yeah, like, it just have some home. common sense. It's a yeah. home, man. And, yeah, and he, don't and, recognize you for your worst work. That's tough. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> That's a good one, Greg. Great way to end that one, but dude. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this, and this always happens to me, man. Like, I always get this advice about how to behave, 
and it's all it's always like it's catered for like the sort of celebrity the advice is like uh, like i'm tom cruise and it makes me feel fucking ridiculous so I, i've got two quick stories on this one during the filming of i zombie whenever we were on location we wouldn't obviously drive to the studio we would drive to circus that would be a makeshift car park or whatever right and we would treat that as our now studio so our trailers would be there we all had to drive and there were only five members of cast and only two men of color and out of these five members of cast everyone had los angeles plates in vancouver so you could tell from the car if you saw la plates <laughs> probably gonna be the guys and also on a predominantly white crew and cast in a predominantly white city it's probably me and malcolm are probably the actors in iZombie. but the two of us kept getting directed on the lot by people who were working in the crew to background oh. and it got to a point when we never said anything so we our cast mates would be parked up next to their trailers and me and Mac would be walking from the car park from from where background would park so we'd always go up and go hi we're with iZombie background over there and we'd be like we don't want to say nothing so we're just like because we're like we're gonna be sweet like, we don't want to give me a lead, bro <laughs> don't want to <laughs> we did it and then when 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 one of the ad's found out they were like Rahul, why aren't you telling them just tell them you're one of the leads and i was like i don't want to it's gross i end up doing it i pull up and the person goes well, who are you here for i said i zombie and they went okay bg parking just over there and i went actually i'm one of the leads and they went Ooh, and walked off yeah, that part, again, and this is my thing. Oh, oh that, shit! That, that <laughs> is that. That is the kind of person that that needs to be fired. You're like you can't exist in this production environment. That is not an accurate way to treat someone who is is top on a call sheet for you're, a show no, you're that right. you're supposed to be protecting, right? Like. That's inappropriate. That's a completely inappropriate and unprofessional response. And they got his ass, Nick. But they got me. They got me good. They got me good. And I That's never funny. did it again. And then the, se the second one was, which, which came up about, about this hotel stuff. Did I just run the dog? No, I did. Um, the, the second thing that happened with the hotel stuff was, is everyone was like, why don't you use a pseudonym? That's what, that's what everyone does. Don't use your real name. Well, I'll tell you why I don't do that anymore. Because I did a convention in New Zealand years ago. And the booking manager said to me, um, what name should we give under the hotel reservation? And I was like, my name. And they went, mm, we don't really do. They know that all the convention right, people guest appearances out, are yeah, going to be yeah. at this hotel. So give a, give a, give a fake name. And I was like, I don't want, ugh, that's wanky. Who get? Okay, like fine. Chris Evans. I'll take Chris John, Evans. John, <laughs> uh, put me under John Marston. And they were like, oh, okay. John Marston. I get on the plane. I got to fly to New Zealand. It's like 17 plus hours. It takes a, fuck ton of time to get there finally get to the airport i uh, sorry to the hotel and as i check in they're like what's your name i said uh it's under booking under john marston and they went can we have your id and passport please yeah these don't match yeah when i, and I went the room the uh, doesn't work you can't do it doesn't that. work <laughs> it took and then because of the time zone the booking manager and anyone oh. who did it and the travel agent were fucking oh. open we had to sit in the oh. lobby for three hours That's... because this dickhead wanted to be red dead redemption yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then and then i remember it was like i bet you feel like a big man now huh i bet you that how did that work out for you mr too big to use his own fucking name can't check in to under john marston so that's why i've never done it since yeah it always, always burns me that always was something that, that i've heard you see in movies i think it was um i think uh oh notting hill that was the movie right julia roberts always checked in under like uh, various names of like mm. other characters and stuff and i was like I, I mean, I guess if you're Julia Roberts level, people understand that, but you have to have someone there managing that in case it goes fucking south, right? Yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio has to walk up to the counter and go, John Smith. And they go, God, yep, I got you, you. <laughs> Mr. Smith. <laughs> Figure it out. Ah. But no, but, but the problem is there's probably still someone out there who's like, I don't know who this guy is. Yeah, possibly. Right? There's uh, always that. That's my, Ravi, that's my problem. Ravi Chakrabarty showing up going, John Marston? <laughs> <laughs> no. Wink, wink. No, definitely not. <laughs> yeah. Dangerous. <laughs> Dangerous. Ladies and gentlemen, that's your kind of funny podcast post show. Thank you, Rahul, for coming through, making some time for us. You Thank big you. That fucking was... deal. Got to check in under these things. Can't just park with the normies anymore. <laughs> oh, that was man, cathartic. I needed that. I needed that rent. I appreciate. Yeah, I get mad for you. I'm gonna be mad the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Nick's going to forget about it in 10 seconds. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for hanging out for this post show. Until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you.